Ganch Bros Int Inc. I don't. <laughs> Ganch Brothers Inc. Limited. What is it? Inc. What is. Okay, is that an I or an L? That's L. So that's Ganch Brothers L's. Incorporated Limited Liability. <laughs> Welcome to the Gang <laughs> Brothers Inc. Int Liability. <laughs> no, it's. I don't know how much you've seen of the direct recently. Um, which one? I saw the Pokemon, I only saw the, like, I might have seen the whole Pokemon Direct. Mm. It, it, there wasn't a lot of information there, it just, okay, that looks nice, but that's how most of the other Pokemon games look. Um, the starters, I don't like, really. <laughs> but I don't know, I've never liked monkey, like, Pokemon, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a fan of monkey Pokemon, okay, so the grass is immediately out. Can you come here? I don't mind the, the bunny as much as everybody else in the world hates the bunny. <laughs> I don't know how they came up with the concept that this the, the the water Pokemon just cries a shit ton. Because he looks sad and they said in the direct he was like Did they? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. They always give the the three starters like personalities, right? Mm -hmm. Um and they're always the same personalities depending on it. Like the fire one is like, you know, uh excitable and does hops around and woo. They gave personalities. Yeah, to, to the, the three starters, and you can tell, like, when you're playing the game, because, uh, the last really? game, what would happen, uh, Pokemon Sun, Moon. Okay. There is, there's why I'm looking this one up, because it was the most relevant for me. Yeah, that's the, that's Diamond Pearl. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, this one, he's a curious, you know, little turtle, and, you know, he, he makes friends easily. This guy's wild, excitable, and, uh, this guy's reserved. And that's how it always is. It's always reserved. This guy's always reserved. This guy's always curious and friendly. It's and this guy's energetic. always, like, energetic. Oh. And it, there are very few exceptions. Um, if you look up, uh... Um... Uh, wait, what the hell? Uh, where's delete? Backspace. No, no, the one that deletes the thing in front of it. There we go. I'm confused. What just happened? Here, look. Ready? Okay. Here's a bunch of ends, right? Yes. I'm putting the cursor in the middle of it. Uh -huh. If I press backspace, it goes back one end. So now it's even three and three on both sides, right? Uh huh. I press delete, what? it deletes the ends in front of it. it I also, didn't know it could do that. Yeah, so whenever I accidentally, like, you know, highlight everything but the last letter, you press delete because it acts like a backspace when you highlight and then delete again. Weird. Yeah. Holy, how do I... <laughs> but anyway, so here we go. So this one they actually changed up a bit, which I liked. Uh, this is uh, the kind of reserved, quiet one who doesn't make friends easily. Okay. This one's uh, a fun-loving one that kind of keeps to himself, so it's kind of similar to the old one. And this one's <laughs> the curious one that <laughs> is friendly like, and makes friends like, easily. This looks like the reserved one, you would think. Right, because it's, it's like an, an owl. owl. And it, it evolves into, like, I guess it's kind of like maybe it's introverted, kind of, because the way it evolves is it evolves into something with the hoodie. Yeah, it's um, like darker. Yeah, there you go. And that, you know, you'd think that's uh, kind of to itself, but then the water one turns into a mermaid, which, by the way, I think that's actually pretty cool. I don't mm. know what other people think about that. I thought it was I'm not cool. a big fan of the face. <laughs> eh, I actually do like it. Um, and then this guy's, you know, ridiculous wrestling Pokemon that we got in Smash. I think it's so funny that they went with this. They were gonna go with him. And I was like, you know, I was like, are they gonna go with the water Pokemon? N nah. <laughs> it's just, that wouldn't be a good mix for Smash, but I can see that. I think I would've liked to play this I character. I would've liked to play, except no, I, I still the zoner. I still like this character. Yeah, and Zoner is so great. But yeah, no, I think it wouldn't just be, because this is, um, they're all based on, um, kind of, uh, RPG types. Ever since, um... The generation before this, mm. when they made one the paladin, they made one um, the mage, <laughs> and then they made one the uh, 
what was the water one? A ninja, right? A thief, right? Which generation? So here I'll show you, but uh, we're gonna have to open up a new tab as we do. Come on. Uh, what was it? Um, X starter. Starter. Okay. So, uh, let's see if we can find the... Okay. Whoa! I've so, never yeah. seen this dude. Yeah, so this one's based on a paladin, right? Because he's got, like, the armored shell. He's got... He's big and bulky. Right. This is a magician, you can tell, because, like, the long flowing things. Uh, the evolutions before had, like, uh, actually here. We'll do this. Damn it! <laughs> Re uh the evolution before it had like a stick that she'd use to like as a wand. Oh my goodness. And uh yeah. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gross. <laughs> Apparently Braxton looks alright. Frogadier. That's pretty great. That's passable. I don't <laughs> cool <imagine. it> in. <laughs> not a Cool it is not. He got cool the, it pretty bad. He had a bad teenage years. Yeah, he did. He was an awkward teenager. But yeah, Braxton looks good. Frogadier, I'll accept. Um, but if we go back to Pokemon Sun... Wait, Sun before that. So it's like energetic... No. Uh, really? That's uh, not the energetic wait, one. Um, so no, this one was the, the more energetic. Um, this one was She's like the more energetic uh, one? conniving kind of one. Energetic, but like also conniving, you know, kind of thing. It's a fox. So that's okay. right. Uh, this one is the the one that makes friends easily. Uh, I think he's curious. He might be energetic. You're right about that. He he might be energetic, but also you know curious makes friends easily. Mm. I guess what this one is <laughs> reserved <laughs> one. Reserved, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the reserved Stalking quiet one ninja boy that keeps to itself. So yeah, unfortunately, it's it's usually the same. So if you'll move on to Pokemon Sun. And, Moon, now we have the fighter, or the monk type, kind of, uh, RPG archetype. Yeah, yeah. The ranger, or the rogue, so the one who, you know, knife, uh, and also bow kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, the point is, he could use a knife or a bow. Like, he could, like, come in close and do, like, quick Sweet. attacks. Okay. And then this one's the healer. I didn't know this about Pokemon. That's actually That's just so something sick. that they just started implementing with, oh within goodness. X and afterwards. I like the direction it's going. I haven't played these. But I, you know what I hate more than anything? People are like, I just can't keep up with the like the latest Pokemon that you know come out. Oh, you don't like so it when many... people say that? Yeah, because it's like, okay, listen the fuck up. You <laughs> went goodness. into Pokemon and there were 152 Pokemon. You know what? In the first generations, right? Mm -hmm. So you started playing the first generations. There's 152 Pokemon. Every time you find a new one, you were like, oh my god, that's so cool. But now, when you see a new Pokemon, it's you're like, like where's your sense of curiosity? It's like huh? exciting. Yeah, it's like, wow, what's this one? What are its yeah, abilities? What is it based off right, of? No, you're like, just like, oh. It's like the first time you picked up a Pokemon game in general. It was just hell, of, hell exciting because you didn't mm -hmm. know what was going to happen mm -hmm. and, and now when you don't know what's going to happen you're like oh well <laughs> so yeah that's that's what i don't like when people are like oh i just can't keep up with the pokemon it's like shut the hell up man that's uh that's oddly appropriate <laughs> wow there you go there you go it's pretty funny i didn't know that about pokemon um other things on direct did you see Link's Awakening? I did see Link's Awakening. Now, I always thought, you know, you have the CEI games, which are really, really weird, really right? Good. And <laughs> Which are really, really weird and, like, bad and shit. And then right. you have the, mod, the the Zelda games, like the first Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, uh, Breath of the Wild, uh, Skyward Sword. They're all the ones that are, you know, you may not have liked them, but they're generally considered, like, very good and they make sense and they're not really complicated or anything, sure. right? Um, I felt like... In the middle of, like, really bad quality and really, you know, good direction and all that. And Skyward Sword made it fall into the wayside. But the point is, they, they had good direction they made sense, right? Sure. I feel like Link's Awakening was right in the middle of those. Where it was, like, really weird and, like, kind of awkward. It had, like, a How... chain chomp from Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How someone's described it to me was, like, it's sort of a dreamscape sort of landscape. And... I haven't played it. Me but I've neither. I've seen like the first. I've seen the first like area, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of like strange characters that you run into. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Is that supposed to be the sort of landscape that they're painting? That of 
like mystique and like strange and it's like is this real where are you right and that's if that's of... the case then you know they did it really well but like i don't know because i haven't played the game either and i don't right. know like what the type like what the bosses even are yeah i just know that it was a kind of an awkward entry into and the there's like a yoshi series. egg and on the top of the i map. never really heard people talk about it yeah I don't know what's the deal with the Yoshi. I think it's just like a bird egg, right? Bird like, one. I always imagined that there would be a boss up there that you fight, like, that's either trying to protect the egg or hatches from the egg or something. Mm. But I don't know. Yeah. Like, it is very iconic, though. And when you talk about Awakening, and at least with the new one, everyone talks about the art direction. Yes. I... I don't know what to make of it. it I, I going, mean to see it again, but as yeah. a general rule, I don't like criticizing, you know, like, uh, new art that people don't like the style of. Like, well, I still like the style, like... Well, here's the thing. It's sort of been done before with the Mario oh, games. Yeah, it's like it's a like, toy. It's like toys. Yeah. And it's like, it's been sort of done already with, um, yeah, like I said, the Mario games, mm -hmm. where everything's sort of sleek... Like, if you look at Mario Galaxy 2, yeah, like some of the platforming levels and such, it's got this sort of sheen to it. Like, look at... It's well, got the, my thing is, like, it, here's the such. thing, right? It could have been done before, and it probably has been done before. <coughs> I think I remember, um, actually, the, the first game I ever played, the party game thing on the Wii U. Um, party game Like, thing. the one that came with the system, what was it? Like, uh, you, you had to run around chasing Mario, and you're a bunch of toads or something. That was one of the mini games there, and then one of them was like you were in Luigi's Mansion, and you were like trying to like catch a ghost, and the other player was the ghost. Oh yeah, no, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, that's and okay. that one, if you look at it, it's very like shiny and like plasticky. Right, but those were like actual toys. Like, but it, it was, was Mario. It was real Mario. It was real Link in the Link games. Well, it, it, was, was, real... it was it was your Mies in the Link. Was yeah. it? Yeah, you don't actually play as Link. I think you play as your me. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. But you play as Toads in the Catching Mario one, right? No. No? I'm pretty sure you play as Miis. Let me look up Nintendo Land. Oh, Nintendo Land, thank you. I was I was dying. I was like, I don't want to fucking say it, but what the hell is it called? Yeah, I, like, this direction works because everything is sort of mechanized and... But I remember and it's sort of like loving a, the graphics there. Yeah, too. yeah, I, I love the direction with this. Oh, okay, so it's yes is the answer. Your guy looks like Mario because they changed all his clothes for Mario clothes, <clears throat> and all these. Uh, and it looks very like plasticky and that kind of thing. And it looked and really it, good and, at the time. Yeah, and the direct and the reason why it works is because they're sort of in this. Uh, how do I describe? It? It's not roller coaster. It's uh, it's Disneyland esque, where it's like. Everything's sort of replicating things that we already know in this sort of environment. Oh, okay, so and since so, we know all of the since, games... Since we know it all, and that everyone that's, like, in this are sort of just... Want, they want to be in that sort of environment. Right. It has the sort of okay, yeah. fake aesthetic to it, where it's, like, everything's toy-ish. Mm. And then when we look at this, it's like, why why is everything toys? Because, do you think... This sucks, because neither of us played Wake. <laughs> yeah, it does. Because <laughs> we can't say for sure whether the story leads to, like, all of this was a dream, and that, I don't know, maybe Link envisioned, like, this world as, like, I don't know, toys coming to life. Or escapism know. from his, like... Maybe. Actual journey. I... I just am not sure why they would go in this direction if... Well, here's the thing. Have you seen um, if the, that wasn't the case. what uh, what it looks like? Uh, look up, um, what was it? Uh, 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 Link to the Past, whatever the second one, the modern version of it was. Uh, Link Between Worlds. Oh, Link Between Worlds. Yeah. Sense. Look Holy at the art style there. <laughs> Wait, what is this? Wait, why would you look at the man's junk? Why would you just look at that? <laughs> Joe, I think I know the truth now. Oh, She's got so a adorable. switcher. She's oh got a freaking switcher. Oh my god, switcher. I'd switch her right now. And it... <laughs> what? She's got the little... Oh yeah, the cookie. little forest nymph things. And you can 
You can, you can, you can split her in half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, I like it a lot more when she's not getting yeah. bisected by a zipper. I'd be down for that. The sticky and fingers. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine going to bed funny. with someone with this? <laughs> it's funny. You'd just leave. They would, they would just they be would like, like I've, I've had enough. I was really horny, but um, <laughs> I mean, you've completely magically lost that's it. gone away. <laughs> Link between worlds. Right. Uh, world, just the one. <laughs> just the one. It looks kind of similar, actually. Yeah. See. Wow. And I didn't for some reason, that. people didn't complain about that one. But um, I think what has happened is, I think that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to take the old nostalgic titles and make it seem like it's toyish, right? I don't think it's a story reason that they're making it look like this. I think it's a um, I think it's a like. The fact that it's un- playing on your nostalgia. They're making mm. it look like toys. Hmm. Let me look at some gameplay. Because maybe it's... I don't know. I think... I mean, they only have that little bit of gameplay that was... Oh, you're looking at Link Between Worlds? Yeah. Okay. Let me just... Sure. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. Let me just get through the middle of it. It, hmm. It's kind of hard to say whether it's toyish or it's sort of the well, limitations the is, of yeah, yeah the it's footage. The 3ds. 3ds. So uh, it's not super like clear. Yeah. Which I mean, I still think is nice, but yeah, you see. Oh, I remember. I remember seeing this for the first time. Seeing his room with the Majora's mask. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> he just has that. You have the greatest up. evil in the, the in the entire world, and it's just hanging on your wall. It's like, oh, don't worry. About How it. does that keep getting replaced? How do new people keep getting this shit? Yeah. Okay. Actually, the more I look at this, it's actually pretty similar. It doesn't have the sheen as much. Right, as, and it doesn't have the skin. <laughs> like the plant, glossiness, like yeah. everything was sprayed down with like vegetable. Yeah, oil. like these were in the uh, in the other Pokemon, not Pokemon. Man, we are. Like so. Weak. I th- yeah, like if you look at the plants, it's like very clearly mm-hmm. shinier and yeah. plasticky, whereas this isn't. Yeah. So it's like it's. I don't but know. Maybe the it's thing cartoony. Is, this gives the vague impression of like toys and that kind of thing. I think they're trying to. Think they so? tried to go in that direction. I don't think a lot of people liked it, but I do. I'm fine with it. Hmm. You know, I I'd just be like I I like the the direction, but they have to like commit to it now for me. So like if they if they hear the responses and they're like, okay, people don't like it, let's just change the whole thing or something like that. Hmm. Um, I wouldn't like that a lot. Um, like they go with the painting esque like look to it. I wouldn't like it. Um, just because they like they had an idea and then people were like. You know, this isn't what I thought it would be like. And they're like, okay, I guess we'll change it for you then. I don't know. What What do you think would be a, be- a better direction for something like... Um. Well, it depends. If Link's Awakening well, DX is a dream, I think uh, it would be like a pastel kind of uh, look to it. Kind of like Skyward Sword. Exactly like Skyward Sword. Except instead of, you know, it just the di- background looking pastel, you have a lot more freedom because... Now you're you're looking at one place. The perspective isn't going to change, and you can do a lot more. Now you just have to you can just paint stuff on the floor, hmm. you know, and it'll look fine. Plus, this is for the Switch, right? So you can you can go get crazy with it because yeah, uh, the graphics actually, are really good on that. That's actually not a bad direction, and and that's like that reminds me a lot of the direction they're going with, um, not the pastel stuff, but they're sort of messing with real life ways to make art as seen by both the most recent Kirby's the Kirby games and the Yoshi games are mixing weird like craft yeah yeah stuff. yeah I, I like the um I like the look of uh, uh what was it Kirby uh epic yarn I believe yeah 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 yeah. people loved that yeah and then you have the Yoshi's woolly world like you're looking up now I never uh got around to I fucking see fucking love the aesthetic in this it's so phenomenal. It's like if you if you're gonna go with the toy direction, mm-hmm. go all out. Like go all out with with it. 
Yeah, but I think, you know, that's that's some toys. Some toys are made out of craft, and some toys are made out of plastic. Link, I think... Mm, you think um, he's like one of those action figures sort of right, things? Right, because listen, Link has a sword, and he goes around swinging and shit, and he kills stuff. This guy's a little cute dinosaur. Like, look, he looks exactly like a stuffed animal. Right. So it makes sense that they'd make him look like a, you know, little yarn stuffed animal. Link is a human being, you know, Hylian or whatever. Holy moly, but Fat shy that is a fat <laughs> ass shy guy. Anyways, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think um, that for Link, it's um, his look is like intentionally like that of a uh, you know an action figure that you know swings around swords mm-hmm. and shit. Mm-hmm. You know, action grip. I gotcha. All right, pause. It looks like I'm running out of space. <laughs> The problem with the Switch is, and this is a genius technique by Nintendo, is it's not only a console, it's a handheld, which means everybody has to have their own, but you can play it like a console at home. You see? That's how they get you. That's how they get you. <laughs> which, I mean, good for them, but also screw them. I, I don't know if it's outsold the Wii's yet. Wii's? The Wii's were popular. Very, were very, very popular. Very popular. They, they were almost like... They, they like, because they were the first person to, like, boldly go and do motion controls where everybody else was like, oh, sure, I'll do motion control or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, and it, like, they implemented it, you know, semi-well. Let's not give them too much credit. But, um... God see, forbid. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need them knowing this. But, um, they, uh, like... They were just, like, novel and really cool, and, like, the way Nintendo markets to families, Mm -hmm. you know, even if you're a six-year-old and you're, you know, grandkids, I guess, that kind of makes sense. Grandkids, yeah, we'll say they have grandkids. The six-year-old and your, you know, seven-year-old grandkids come over, you know, if you have a Wii, they'll love it, you know? And you'll love it, because it's it's simple, but, Mm -hmm. you know, still Not portable. Yeah, so which is why which is why the Switch is um isn't geared as much towards families anymore, right? It's, it's starting to it's starting to get more towards yeah, gamers. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because then that's why there's been sort of a lack of what do you call it local multiplayer games because mm-hmm. it's the the sort of niche thing where a group of people would go to a friend's house to play is sort of dwindling now. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you noticed that because every time I see a local multiplayer game, I'm like that's great, but like, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. like go over to a friend's house just to play that game, am I? Like, I still want to play. Uh, what is it? Frolf with Danielle. Frolf? Why do you want to play Frolf? Dude? <laughs> Why don't you want to play Frolf? Such a dumb <laughs> name, and I've seen the game, and I don't want to hurt frogs, man. <laughs> They look pretty happy to me. Also, <laughs> like, since when have depressed. you been into golfing games? So what, are you a big golf game player now? It's, I watched... Going out on the PGA Tour. <laughs> I watched the game... The, the, gra- the Graham Grumps. The Game the Grumps Grime playlist. Grimes. Their playlist. Uh, yeah. Frolf. And I'm just like, this actually looks kind of, like, super creative. <laughs> and, like, you have to sort of think about ways <laughs> to get your frog... From one point to another with the most points. I don't know. They took golf and made it interesting. They made it frogs. <laughs> I'll give you that. They they made it interesting. I just like just because it's novel and new and cool doesn't mean it's fantastic, you know. That's fair. But you know, I'll I'll play it, I'm sure. I'll end up playing it once and I'll be like, wow, this is a game. That's fair. I, I don't have the fortitude that you do, Joe. I like Minecraft, okay? <laughs> it isn't safe. Stop though. judging me! The fact that that game is still relevant still blows me. I'm, like, my mind. Okay, thank you. I, 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 I realized that I messed up that sense. No, no, I mean... Minecraft blows me. <laughs> Dude, Minecraft blows me. But it, it's just... It's like, it's the pioneer, and, like, they still have updates, and, like... You know, you say, you know, a long time ago, the when you were playing Minecraft, when you go into the oceans, the only thing you'd find is gravel, right? And that's really boring, and nobody cares about that, right? Mm-hmm. 
So people complained about it, and it was kind of a joke within the Minecraft community. Is like, everything's so cool and diverse, and they're like trees and shit. And then when you get to the ocean, there's no mobs, like no creatures. It's just dead sea. And then do you know what they do? They fixed it. They made it cool. Mm. So now it's really cool to go into the sea. Was this like a recent update, or is this you saying this? Somewhat like recent. Somewhat recent update. And now it's like, well, they're listening, right? Like, if yeah, people are like, listening. I like Minecraft, but, well... Then they fixed it. And it's like... Suddenly, every aspect of the game has become just way more interesting. Yeah, and like, they they made these things called villages, which are just naturally spawning things with a bunch of villagers. Mm -hmm. And the trading system is shit, and nobody cares about it. And there's no reason to, like, get invested, because they'll just get attacked by zombies and die. And, like, it's like, whatever, I'm not gonna, like put forth effort to like mine this specific thing to give to them so I can get like two pieces of bread, right? Mm -hmm. Um so now they're fixing that. The next update the that's gonna come out they're interesting. They're gonna make villagers and like pillagers or something and like all that sort Ooh, of shit. That that's like Terraria then, with like the whole you build a town and such. Or th there's like these towns and then these guys outside forces sort of uh, attack it. Mm -hmm. Like the goblin uh I don't know what the Goblin gang. <laughs> yeah, but here's Goblin the, army. Here's the difference between the two. When you build a house in Terraria and have all these people move in, they're all these people. They're helping you, right? You know, you get benefits from them. You can't hurt them or anything, right? And you're just there and, um, like, they're your com comrades, right? Sure. So you want to defend them from this goblin army. Mm -hmm. But at Village, these people are, you know, you don't know them. You're an outside force walking into their already established village. And, like... You just don't they really don't care. need to live, you know. You can you can choose to be their savior, you know. Put yeah. a fence around it, put a bunch of torches in there. Nothing. Or you just feel like, eh. or you can be a chaotic force where you're like, eh. that's not really. Chaotic. I'm gonna steal. Like, that's as true neutral as possible. I'm just gonna steal a bunch of shit from okay. their chest and stealing let is them chaotic. Die. <laughs> stealing the stealing bits chaotic. Right, and <laughs> that's that's what I think the advantage that Minecraft will always have over Terraria. Is that you can just choose to do whatever you want. You can choose to be an asshole. Mm. Or you can choose to, you know, help these people. Whereas in Terraria, you can't even attack, like, the NPCs. Right, you or... can't even attack them. I mean, you can throw the poor guy's freaking body in the lava a thousand times over. <laughs> he had to go. Yeah. I mean, being the first guide in the game must be like, oh, shit. <laughs> You're like, wow, look, I just progressed to hell. And he's like, oh... Good. <laughs> he's, just, he's just counting the, the minutes. Yeah, he's, like, just, he's just waiting. Oh, he's got... He's, I see he's going to hell with all that gear. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> what you gonna do down there, kid? My guy's kind of weird, because I think it sort of set... It basically made a new genre. It did. Because, like... Or at least like, it popularized it, it. To the point where everybody plays it now. <laughs> Or maybe it not even made a new genre per se, but maybe like combined two things that normally people wouldn't put together, and that is being creative and building things, mm. and having to go through a world to to make that possible in the first place. So having your own adventure, right? But still being able to do whatever to be creative, the hell you want. right? Because when I look at a game like Terraria, if if it didn't have the building aspect of it, I think I would still have a lot of fun with it. Because, like, it... I think the like, building aspect of Terraria is pretty weak. I'm gonna be honest. I think yeah. it's pretty weak. And I think that's kind of interesting, because it's like, I would think that Minecraft's... It focused more on the building creative aspect of it. And I think, originally when it was made, it probably was the focus... Yeah. From the get-go. I, I would imagine. Adventure plus creation. And and that seems like really simple, but like it was it was revolutionary for like so many people that loved both of those things. And a, who would have known? There's a crap ton of people that love being creative and love being adventurous. Because that's sort of the that's sort of what a lot of games are. I think that people love being able to do those things individually in their own games. Like um, I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, like, everyone loves the adventures of, like, Legend of Zelda and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but then... And then... I don't know if it's... 
it's quite the same. But like they want to like they want to make something now in Legend of Zelda, right? Because they they love the adventure, but now they they have nothing to create, right? They're just right. in that world. Right. They can't really change it. Yeah, and I think customizing the world as you want it is what really makes I think the game super unique to your experience because it, it kind of validates your individual experience because you're able to make things that only you could do with your own skills and you get to see it sort of mold itself mm -hmm. and I, I think Notch is a bit of a genius for for realizing that yeah yeah I uh, I'd agree um, I think a big thing that helped Minecraft uh, that, like, one of the biggest things that was important for Minecraft was, uh, I think there were games akin to it, right, that kind of had that idea. Yeah, but uh, they weren't as popular. Minecraft. But the thing is, when you build something in those games, uh, and this is the block structure, the reason why Minecraft, for one, it just, like, it's a, like, it's, it's a style, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's an, an aesthetic. aesthetic. And, like, it, it's ugly. <laughs> if we're going to be honest, it's ugly. But it the thing is... When you make a house in like some other game where you can build your own base or something, mm -hmm. you're putting it in this like this like terrain that's really like smooth and nice, and you're just kind of putting a house on it, and it's like awkward and bulky, and it doesn't fit into the terrain, right? Mm. But with Minecraft, everything's a block, so the terrain is a block. So when you build a house, you can fit it perfectly into that right. terrain. Right, it's kind of like Legos. No, Every, like, everything perfectly aligns itself. Right, and I think world. that's a big falling that a lot of other games that try to be like Minecraft and a lot of games that um that uh came before Minecraft had was that it just it didn't look like it looked like your house was different like it wasn't it, it, it didn't blend with the environment as right. much as it should have and then not only that but like in base building games you know Minecraft's not a base building game per se because like you can the base isn't the only thing that you can affect you can also go into a cave and, like, put a, a rail system through it. And now you can, like, just ride on a roller coaster through that cave. Mm -hmm. And, like, no other game does that, you know? No other game allows you to just go into their, like, dungeon, quote-unquote dungeons, and just do whatever you want, you know? Yeah, yeah. And again, that that's supporting my, my idea that it's... Uh, it makes your personal experience with the the world very unique, and it feels like your own. Right. And that's why I think people come back to that game so much, because they've done so much with it, and such a personal and like individual experience in whatever endeavors they go through. Because it's like, when you return to that cave, it's like, ah, uh, yeah, I remember I used to have to walk through all that, mm -hmm. and now I've made... Because I've progressed now, mm -hmm. and I think that's a huge part, the, the being able to visualize and see progression from where you were and where you are now. Right. That's all. That's a big that's, part of the games that I really like. Yeah. It has to be... As someone that hasn't played Minecraft... Which, by the way, like... <laughs> is a sin. You should, yeah, no, no, it's not a sin, but, like, you should play it, in my opinion, because, uh -huh. uh, like, I don't know if you'd like it, you know, a ton or anything, sure. but I think you'd have, you know, a few hours of fun for sure with it, but, like, if you do get into it, you know, it's, like, it's just the most, like, fun thing ever, right? Like, I've come back to Minecraft so many times hmm. for different reasons, and uh, one of the things I want to make clear about Minecraft is it's so customizable, like you're saying, like... One of the reasons I really, really love Minecraft is because I put all my art oh, that's right. in Minecraft. Can, yeah, that's I make right. my own textures. So instead of having a dumb sword that's, you know, made out of diamonds, now I have this cool, badass, like, sword with gems in it and shit and that's on fire or something. And uh -huh. you can also animate it. So it's like... Oh, wow, you can? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And uh, there's a few things, like, uh, for the stone sword, I have a pocket knife, right? Uh -huh. And it pulls out a knife then pulls out, like, a screwdriver, and then pulls out a gun, and then it swims back to the knife. Holy yeah, holy. and that was that took a while to, like, figure out how to <laughs> sounds like it get it. But it, it looks really smooth now, and it's a lot of fun. Because now, like, you know, if I make a stone sword, now I have this cool pocket knife shit, but there's also enemies that carry around stone swords in the game, and now they have a giant goofy pocket knife in their hand. And it's just like, that's me. I made that, you right, know? Right, right, right. 
I forgot about that whole the modding aspect of it. Of yeah, like and that's due to it. That's another reason that it not not only that it was popular, but I think this uh, like attests to its staying power. That's why it's still popular, right? Because mm. anything can be really really good for a time, but like now that people can like, oh, I'm bored of Minecraft. I guess I'll just get a whole new world that I can yeah, add on to the just side download of it. it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that, the longevity of Minecraft, as far as I can tell, isn't going away mm -hmm. anytime soon. Yeah. The fact that people can just continually be super creative with ideas and such, I think is really making it live. Right. And you know what? Good, good for Notch. <laughs> good for Notch. <laughs> yeah. Good for him. I don't even think he's involved in the game anymore. I think he handed it off to another team. Really? But they, they've taken his vision. They're just, you know... They're doing everything right. They're listening to the, what the community wants. That's always a scary thing when the cre the original creator sort of passes it on to another group. Yeah. But luckily, it seems he's passed it to the right group, mm -hmm. which I feel like is kind of rare. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, well, the problem for is, like, you know, no one's ever gonna have the same vision as you, right? Like, you can align so perfectly, but you know. You're going to look at the game and be like, ah, I think it should be like this. And the other person's going to be like, uh, you know, hmm. and, you know, it depends whose vision is, you know, the one that the public more closely aligns with. But, you know, yeah, you can only appeal it's dangerous. to so many people. But uh, one of the things that Minecraft did uh, early on is they they like on the modding thing, they actually like a lot of the mods that people would make. They just integrated into their game. Hmm. Which is what a lot of other developers did. So, like, uh, one thing they had a, a while ago was a piston, right? Mm. Um, and what it would do is it push a block one thing, right? Right, right. And it wasn't really, like, it, it was kind of weird working with them. It was kind of awkward in the mod form. So right. what the team did was they looked at that mod, and then they basically improved it and put it in the game. Huh. So it's like their modders are helping them sort of shape the game for it to be a fish, quote unquote, official, right, and such, because, and I, I think the modder was given credit for the um, for the uh, particular thing. I'm not sure though, mm -hmm. but uh, I want to say that yeah, that he was um, you know, given credit for making the pistons mod, and giving them the idea to put in you know real pistons. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so. Right. so there's Minecraft. Yeah. Oh, right. I've been playing X again since coming back home. Xenoblade X. Oh, Xenoblade X. I was like, Mega Man X? You were like, what? No, no, no. I mean, it seems obvious now, but... <laughs> I'm still absolutely loving that game. Which is weird, because I love story-driven games, but I'm loving it for the gameplay. And it's not like I dislike the story. It's not solid story. gameplay. It's not like I dislike the story. Like... It's not like super original mm, where it's like it's, uh, yeah. humanity's on their last legs or whatever. Right. And I think it's integrated well, but yeah, it's like. Eh. But I'm actually completely fine with sort of being, how I describe, of having that overarching plot line be in the foreground as I'm just out adventuring, because then it's like my adventuring out there supports the story because I'm trying to get an understanding of the world mm -hmm. and I'm trying to survive and I'm trying to get materials and all that. So everything I'm doing outside of the main quest is actually supporting the story in its own way. So it's like I'm indirectly always in the main story <laughs> with my character and I'm enjoying the combat quite a bit. Yeah, I think they improved the combat, I'm gonna be honest, from yeah. Xenoblade uh, <laughs> 1, I believe, Chronicle 1. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, the basic gist of combat in Xenoblade 1, as far as I can tell, is use break, have <laughs> have Ryan topple. Or have Ryan do the wrong move three times <laughs> in a row, and then the break Ryan! goes away, and you're like, god damn it. <laughs> but yeah. And then you stun him. Yeah. And, and it's like, with this game, it, there's... The fact that there's so many goddamn classes, it, it means that you can be very creative with the direction mm. you go. And there's so many characters. And here's my sort of slight issue with having so many characters, is because there's so many of them, it makes it so that each individual doesn't feel as special with the group. Yeah, yeah, like, I can see that. With Xenoblade 1, every individual character 
brought something completely different than and then their interactions the and they each had like unique interactions yeah, 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 with yeah. every other member yeah whereas like everyone in this sort of has their set thing that they say after a victory and it doesn't right. feel personal and to I be fair there are certain groupings of characters that will um yeah probably that the, will the main you... cast with yeah yeah the main Lin cast and... uh i remember um the the sword fighter that i really liked playing as um, he was like a fire sword guy. I don't know what his uh, there's a fire were. sword guy. They're all fire sword guys. If you if you if you're if you're playing with the sword, a lot of the moves you get are fire moves. Or... I thought they're like photon, like laser. No, or... no, not that, not that. That's the uh, laser sword. I'm talking about the normal sword, like the big thick. This Vihander sword. I don't think I've ever had... <laughs> I've never used this Vihander. It's the, it's the first class, like the class at the top, the first we the melee weapon okay, is I've, a sword. I haven't checked out that class yeah, yet. But, but um, now I definitely will. <laughs> well, it's it, it's more fun when you're playing as this guy, because he's got skills especially tailored mm -hmm. for that, and like exploit fire damage and that kind of thing. Because mm -hmm. uh, he lights them on fire and then just does more damage to them while they're on fire, which is like a really fun way to play. Um... But he and the uh, Elma, yeah, 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 the the bronze beauty. Um, <sighs> she's so beautiful, right, dude? She's really attractive. But um, they they have like a specific dialogue that goes on between them mm -hmm. because they're closely related. I'm not gonna spoil it too much, but um, yeah. Okay, so I'm glad they have some of that. All right. But it's it's not nearly as much as the other, right? If you get this random guy and another random not guy, have... there's a very low chance that yeah. they're going to have, like, a specific thing that they say. And, and I, I think it was always those personal relationships between and exchanges between the characters that I loved about Xenoblade 1 so much. Mm. Cause especially... It's what made the, the, the talking after the battles seem not annoying. <laughs> because yeah, yeah. In, in Xenoblade X, it could get a little, probably wearing on you after a while because it's just not it's you're hearing the same thing yeah yeah it's yeah. like oh yeah. uh, whatever um and i think it was the the cutscenes that felt so real between the it made each individual feel realer mm. because you would have just scenes where like shulk and ryan were just cleaning their weapons I fucking love that. Yeah, that is a that's that is a good probably touch, one of my actually. favorite. <laughs> oh my gosh, and, and 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 the reason why I think that's so that's so important is because it it makes them well I've already said it makes them feel more real, but it it makes everything that they do sort of it it wears on them like it it combat affects them. They have to maintain mm, they their just, stuff. You know, I, They're I not just, just running from point A to point B from 4, that day times, to night. Yeah. Like, you might be doing that gameplay-wise, but it's like, conceptually, they're resting in between, like, every night and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of sleeping in that game. Yeah. <laughs> and, God, it makes the characters just feel great to play as. And, and I think the more that you, you personally connect with characters the better it feels to play as them. Because there's so much weight behind everything they do all of a sudden. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's that's sort of what's missing a little bit in X right now. The, the sort of characterization in between the individuals. Because mm. I think that's so important. Yeah. But I'm not going to bash on X too much, because, like I said, the combat's just been fantastic. The visuals... Oh man, I, I can't remember what the fo it's it's the forest area Noctilum I think Noctilum yeah, which of I course <laughs> I think is Latin for like or has Latin something dark things it, it night basically, <laughs> but yeah. it still has a night cycle like everything else I guess they mean if you're under a blanket of trees it looks like it's night but I whatever suppose. Um, or it might have something to do with the evil red thing that I still don't know what it is growing up in the corner, like near the north. Like, in the area you probably can't get to yet, mm. unless you have a flying skull. Um, yeah, I'm not even yeah, close. It's, it's just this, like, giant lake area with, like, this, like, red, gross thing that's, like, extending down. Mm. And, yeah. uh, what I was going to get at was, I remember you, you said before that one of the things you liked about the game so much was exploring these environments. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm in Noctlum, and there's just these, just everywhere, just bugs just like little dots and like 
glowing things in the sky, mm-hmm. and and you can just run through them. And I freaking love just things that are sort of surrounding you wherever you go. And then just like moving the camera, and they all just like swish around you <laughs> yeah. in a blind of light. Um, I don't know why I have this visual so clear in my head, but like I can just imagine all these like little bugs just sort of like as you're running, sprinting through it all, it just, they just all sort of splash across the characters' faces. Dude, I hate that. <laughs> God. Oh, uh, yeah, in real I life, it's, that. like, yeah. fucking disgusting. <laughs> well, wh- how far have you gotten into the story? Because I think if I was in the way their their position, I would be fine with it for certain reasons, but... Uh, I don't think I've gotten far enough. Gotten far enough? Because there's there are a few big twists, and they are like, oh, okay. It's like, oh, that, that makes changes, sense. This changes everything. I swear, thing. I really hope they talk about how they don't take landing damage. <laughs> <laughs> that they're because there are reasons. I'll I'll give it that. I'll give it. That's there so there actually wait. There is landing damage after if you fall for a while, you take damage, but you heal it right off, right? I don't think you take damage. Really? I'm pretty. Is that sure just you know. Xenoblade One? I'm thinking about that. One, you take damage for sure. Right. I think in two, you can just jump off, and 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 they do a, a little staggering animation, but I don't think they get hurt. Oh, okay. Because I definitely remember. Um, like, if there is falling damage, it takes a while for you to get to that threshold where it starts giving you damage. Mm, maybe because, falling far enough. Right, because, possible. I mean, your character can jump, like, 30 feet high, so, like, falling from 30 feet I would break your fucking that. legs. Why are we jumping so high? Please explain. <laughs> there are reasons. I'm I'm positive, but I'm surprised. I thought it was pretty early on that you find out uh, the, the big... Uh, one of the big twists, because there are more. I've not but, been playing the main story. <laughs> right, and here's the thing about the main story I was going to mention is, uh, in Xenoblade 1, uh, the way I like to think of it is it's like, the the progression in terms of like the areas is kind of linear, right? They mm-hmm. kind of lead you from one area to another. You, The good thing is they have branching paths off it, right? Right. But if you go straight through, you'd get to the next place, to the next place, to the next place, right? Mm-hmm. But if you choose to explore, you can find like, uh, a fairly diverse area outside of it, right? Sure. What the thing that Xenoblade X does that I like better is it just has a giant world that says, eh, go here if you want to continue, but the world has nothing to do with, like, this thing. Like, mm. you can go there if you want, or, or you, can, you, can go you can, like, go from the top, else. you can go from, you know, wherever, or you can just go into the corner, go to the last area in the game, check it out. Are you <laughs> because serious? I'm pretty sure... That probably need your skills the story first. does not take you through every uh, one of the five like continents. Oh wow! So there's just continents that aren't part of the story, yeah, are part of the main explore. story that you can explore. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm I, I'm pretty sure at least one of them, if not two. It's very brave of them to do that. <laughs> right. But the thing is, like, the one that I'm thinking of that I'm pretty sure does not have a place in the story. If you go to it, it's like. It's one of the most like crazy and cool looking areas in the entire game. I can't probably. wait. How many how many of the uh, areas have you discovered? Um, uh, oh, just the desert. The um, yeah, the desert Primordia. place and the, and, the, and the main one and then Noctilum. Yeah, which okay. is all the ones that aren't separated by the water barrier, basically. Right, right. Because the other two are just super. Far I think away. you can swim them. Are you serious? I think you can swim it. I think. I want to say that's how I got to the northern one. Are you serious? I want to say I I, I went to an no island off the way. coast of it. And I was just like, let me just follow this chain of islands up there. So I just did, and then I just arrived there. That's so I was cool. Like, huh. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think the water barrier is purely like, I. what you want to do it's is you want to find the islands and go along the islands. Too. Wow. Holy moly. <laughs> Yeah, I remember I was trying to, like, I just hunt assumed, something on the specific island. I just islands. assumed there's just an, there has to be an invisible wall here, or, there are like, all these islands over there are elevated on some sort of cliff where I can't access them, mm. is my assumption. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I got uh, the, the one in the north area before I got to go. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I think it's possible. 
But I can't wait to get skulls. Actually, I can wait. I can wait to get skulls because it just. You like are I said, the one percent of the people who would say that. Because <laughs> everybody else was like, "I want to fuck it," and you're gonna hate it too. Because let me just I'm spoil hate skulls. Them. No, you're gonna hate getting them. Because what they do is they're like, "Okay, you. We think you're good enough to get a skull now. Okay, go do these ten side quests." Each having to do with a different, like, class, you know, like, uh, huh. the Pathfinders or the Mediators or whatever. Sure, sure. And you do it for all ten of them. And then they are like, now you can have a skull. Whereas this one guy downstairs is like, oh, I just joined and here's my skull. And it's like, you're a bitch. <laughs> I'm saving the world. <laughs> yeah. Or destroying it. I don't know. I don't know which... Are we, are we the baddies? <laughs> Ooh. Do you remember Ooh. we had exchanges about Xenoblade One? I'm like, I think we're the baddies, <laughs> and you're like, no, the Mikados are bad. <laughs> I remember you explicitly saying, yeah, the Mikados are bad. <laughs> it. And and I'm pretty I sure you're one just... of the faults in the story is it tries to be like, oh, maybe the Mikados aren't that bad, and it's like, no, no, <laughs> the, the Mikados are bad. There's some good machine people, but <laughs> the Mikados are bad. <laughs> And it's like, aww. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I kind of assumed you were just trying to, like, pretend. And, like, you are like... I, no, I might have been bad. to some extent. Because I know the story plays with those themes, but I, it doesn't really explore them as much as, you know, it could have. Which is fine, you know? Maybe it's just not one of the things it wants to explore. But, like... The... The... The Mechanist just attack your hometown and kill a bunch of people. Like... That is that's pretty, pretty hard bad. from like an ethics standpoint. That's pretty much in the bad it's like, area. <laughs> I think they would at least like communicate, maybe talk. Right, that's and what it's not like you've been do. having a war where you're going out and hurting them. They just come to you, right? And no it's not like a preemptive attack. You're just arming defenses there when it happens. Right. So it's like pretty bad. We're the bad guys. No. <laughs> No, probably that's, not. That's not probably how it's going. Because on. at least the Bionis, pe the people of Bionis are at least willing to communicate, right? And talk about even if the Bionis was sapping the life out of the Mechanis, which I think was the case. Yeah, something like that. Definitely at the beginning when it did like struck the side right. of it with the then monolith. at least the Bionis are willing to the people of there were willing to talk. Mm. And that's like, another thing concerned. I think is the problem is that the Bionis might be bad, and the thing is, you associate everything on the Bionis with, with the Bionis. And, and good. But goodness. but you associate the Bionis itself and everything, you kind of group that into one team, and then mm -hmm. the Mechanis and everything on the Mechanis is one team. But that's not really the case, you know, right. the Bionis is its own thing, and you're just living on it, and you're, you're independent from it, right? Sure. So, if the Bionis, you know, kills something, that's not you being, you know, on the team, the bad team. It's just, oh, the continent I was on killed something. Right, so it's you know? like... And I think that's such a great message, to mm -hmm. say that you can't just group everything into good or bad. Mm -hmm. Like, thematically, the things that they teach in Xenoblade 1 are so important, I yeah. think, for people. Probably my favorite... And it... Obviously, it's such, it's such the, it is so the main theme of this game, where you control your own future. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is very, that is explicitly the theme that, that is, they're trying to say, yeah. And it's like, what, what was, uh, Lady Maynith, what did she say? Uh, li live in a world with no need for gods. Mm. I believe is what she said. Something like that. And Which I'm is just a like, hot take. Because then, yeah. then it's like, what that, that means is that you, you take your own responsibility for the things that you do, and that you make real the actions that you do based on the sort of culture that you live in with the people that you live with, and you sort of cultivate an idea of what is inherently good and what is inherently bad, not because you believe in some sort of dogma by a god that you just sort of do because you were told to, mm -hmm. but you sort of, you, you, you learn and you realize things that are true and false, and you sort of write your own future. Mm -hmm. You pave your own path, not destined by fate. That is such a cool theme to tell, mm -hmm. and it's so goddamn important, I think, Yeah. that if you want things to be better, 
you go out and make things better. Mm hmm Like, you, ha you can control... Not all of it. Don't get me wrong, right, life's right. chaotic. <laughs> it's all order and fun until you get into a car accident and it's all chaos. <laughs> oh, jeez. That, that's just a... honestly realistic, though. <laughs> that's probably the biggest... Yeah. <laughs> but, I don't know. I just think... The fact that they're able to portray that that message so powerfully, I think, just goes to say something about the vision that this director had with this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I don't know, because I get it mixed up. There are a lot of games, like uh, I know Fire Emblem Awakening and Final Fantasy, uh, the first game, and all these different games that were the last game the studio was going to make. So they just threw all, right, all their right. stuff into it, and then it worked so well. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's what happened with Monolith Soft. I didn't. Mm. I don't know if you it was weren't like, sure if they were on their last. Leg yeah, on their something. last leg. But I want to say that this is one of the instances where it was like they were. You know, they're like, okay, this is our last game, and then they released it, and everybody loved it so much that they they're had. like, yeah, that they're like, now we're a real company. Now we have to like, we have to keep <laughs> we have doing to do it. it again. Yeah, we have to like, <laughs> we have to do more of this. You know. Mm -hmm. And. Once again, I don't I don't dislike Xenoblade 2. <laughs> but From what I've heard I do, you know. I'm just you're taking the IP and you're just stepping on it. That's what they did. They took the not IP entirely, they wrapped it up in <laughs> anime and then they <laughs> stepped on it. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't know if you've seen some of the cutscenes in that game. I'm sure they're just I see I don't want to see a cutscene that they're just like, oh, I'm doing an anime trope. Oh, I better not walk into this dressing room. Or maybe I'll walk in here and not knock. Oh my god, it's a naked girl. I, she's going to be so mad at me. I'm mad at you. Oh is, no, she's mad at me. I think if, if anime has done any sin, <laughs> it is that they, they ruined it. The Xenoblade series. <laughs> if you, oh, that's the that's where you draw the line. Huh? Everything's draw. fine, but once you ruin Xenoblade, like you put too much anime into this. Also, I don't it's get it. Like go. from um from Xenoblade X to Xenoblade Two, because that's when they made, how they made the games. That's mm -hmm. a really weird progression. Right, like how the studio changed so much. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like Xenoblade X is very like. It's very futuristic. Future, futuristic, kind of. Re it, the character designs are like kind of anime. It's a lot, but it doesn't have anime tropes. I feel like it's as, sorely missing in those. I think I d haven't seen enough characters to say that. But the characters I have seen, and seem I'm not to be talking. More, the character design can be anime, but you know, whenever you they, associate character design with anime, it's just over the top, right? Right. But but like the the dialogue and the interactions, I feel like it's are, a little bit more mature. Yeah. That's it, mature. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, way more mature than you know typical. Anime. Yeah, so you think there's some a big jump somewhere between? I don't know what changed. Did someone <laughs> go up to them and say, "We need to make this wife"? Food. Hey, watch this harem anime, and they were like, That's... "Okay," and then they're like, <laughs> "What were we thinking? <laughs> we we're so wrong before. Everybody loves this shit." I, I still don't understand how the game was rushed. Xenoblade Chronicles 2? 2 was rushed, okay. apparently. And I'm like, how have they not learned after 1? Not to rush them. Not rush... It, it, which is weird, because Xenoblade 1 was fantastic despite it being rushed. I mean, there are games that are fantastic despite them being rushed. I don't know, maybe they tried their luck again. <laughs> yeah, they are like, we were great under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said our deadline was in two years, but can we move it up to, like, I don't know, two One? weeks or something? <laughs> two weeks? <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> what game are we gonna make? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. And there are instances of like very good moments in Xenoblade Two. I I think I showed you the best. That must scene. have been the one they hired a writer for. <laughs> I already showed you the best. Yeah, scene yeah. The, fu the campfire camp scene. That I already said. I, I've already said this song, song and dance. But it reminded me so much of like the moments that were in Xenoblade One. <laughs> we're always, like, always remember, comes back. Do you remember Xenoblade One? <laughs> Man, that was a fun game. All right, back to this game. <laughs> it made their interactions between each other like it made them believable. seem closer, believable, and and it's like this is why this group is together. Mm -hmm. Like you, you see that, and you're like. 
this is why they're they're bonding, and this is this is why they're not like they were just taped together, like they actually you know managed to run into each other. It it feels so much more natural why this ragtag team of fighters are fighting, Mm -hmm. and in Xenoblade One, everyone had a reason to fight, and in two, it's like. Some people are just kind of latching on. They're just like, sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. We had to have this guy because he fills a certain archetype and uh, he has a certain move. All right, fine. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm seeing a little bit of that in X. Yeah, well, I think that is a kind of weakness with X because... The characters and I, such. I think it's more a problem of the situation. You could blame it on the characters, but the situation is... They're all on a deserted planet, and they're all joined in this military group. That's the reason they're together. Mm -hmm. Fight. You know? Right. I don't think it takes much, you know, credence into it where it's like, these people got together because they, you know, share the same opinion. They want the same thing, and they want, you know, the same goals. Or they have different goals, but they all align the same way. It's like, they're all part of this military group, and they're supposed to do shit, so have fun. (laughs) Yeah. It's not as personal, mm-hmm. I suppose. Like really maybe is. if you there is, oh, the right. That's right. There are affinity missions where you can sort of get to know the people a little bit more. Yeah, but more importantly than getting to know them, Joe, is you can get one of their skills for your main character. Oh, really? Yeah, that's the main reason for them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm sure there's a story reason. Oh, it's so nice to learn that this I guy get disagrees stronger. with this guy. But look, I really need that ability from you, and I'm not getting any younger, okay? <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So there is a, a gameplay reason, this is which a, is, a you know, it reason. integrates story and game. Uh-huh. You know? But and, you have to listen to the story. In order to get that aspect of the game. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah. you know, isn't too offensive mm-hmm. to me, but... That's fair. Wow, we just talked about Xenoblade for a <laughs> Dude, It's Xenoblade. almost like it's a really good game. Yeah, it's almost it's almost and like two of the three it. games are really great. <laughs> uh, I, I just... I heard that when Xenoblade was, uh, X wasn't talked that much about, I was kind of like... Oh god, people don't like it. I'm like the one person who has this opinion that I like this game. And like that's why I was worried about you playing it because I thought so, it'd be another know, Skyward Sword. You know I'm so opinionated. Where, yeah, and I thought it'd be another Skyward Sword where I was singing its praises for the longest time and then you play and you're like, This is dog shit, Christian. And I'm like I, was, I guess I was wrong. I was so <laughs> I guess excited. I was, you, it was, I was so excited. <laughs> yeah, I let you down. I'm sorry. I didn't... Oh, man. I thought Maybe it was you good. Maybe hyped it up too okay? much. Maybe you hyped it up too Look, much. I don't like the dousing part either, but I thought it was good. I like the environments and shit, but... The environments, yeah. And I there really love the art cool. style, but... Yeah. <laughs> it just, can only carry a game Yeah, so I was about to say, but I guess that doesn't make a game. It just makes a painting. <laughs> You know, <laughs> makes a painting. Yeah, or a really nice laptop background. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was worried about. But I'm glad you're mm-hmm. at least liking a little bit. I don't know if when you get to the end of the game, you'll be like, "Wow, that story was worth it," or like, "Wow, I was building I... up and getting all these skills from all these different places for the main story, and the main story really let me down." <laughs> but I, I think I, it's it good. seems to, the fact that I I've made up already a per, very personal connection with this character I've created. Which, mm. by the way, this this is a short tangent. I think this is why, in a role playing game, it's actually important to have how to describe it. Uh, it's not multiple choice. Well, choices. It's important to have choices with no consequences because it's okay. Supports. That's interesting. I've never heard choices with no consequences. It's Im- it's I think I agree with you on the outside, on the role yeah. on the role playing aspect of it. It's like you don't want to affect the game negatively because mm. of your choices. Right. But you also want to roleplay as your character. So the fact that it is of no consequence, I think, further establishes what your, who your character is. Right, and it and allows you f- to play as your character without being like, oh, I got the bad ending because I Yeah, because I, decided I decided to-, to be my character. Yeah. And I think this is one of the few times where I'm like, um, uh, choices without consequences can work, mm-hmm. which is like a rarity. Because a lot mm-hmm. of people are... are are pissed that their choices don't mean anything. Right. In a lot of like Telltale games, mm-hmm. there's there's some choices that seem to not. Yeah, yeah, but if, if there isn't a 
blank will remember this, then it pretty much doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as... I mean, I haven't played the game, but... I, from I've the people that I've seen, games, yeah. yeah. But I think that's fascinating to think about, because... I think I, I totally agree with you there, though. Yeah, some people forget about the role-playing aspect of games, because, like, even Dark Souls is a role-playing game. Mm-hmm. Like, if you look at... It is what... It is what changes... It is what makes a game different from a book or, like, right, any other medium right. of art. Because you get to affect yeah, because who this person is. you're in it now. Right, right. Like, in Dark Souls, you can change um, their, their nationality, and they can be of a certain area or a certain place. Like, they might be a nomad, they might be, like, a monk or something, and mm-hmm. you can, like, change their, their, their features and stuff. And it's like, they're from this country, and then they've arrived in this prison... And they're off on this Dark Souls adventure. Hmm. And you get to sort of play out this person's life. The fact that I've done that... That sounds very Skyrim-esque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, they that do that the same is. thing. Yeah, yeah, that's actually... A, that's another great point. Like, Skyrim does that super well. Mm-hmm. The role-playing aspect of it. So, in defense of choices without consequences, I think it depends on your perspective of it. Mm-hmm. It's like, how important is are these choices to affect what happens in the story, like, gameplay-wise? Mm-hmm. Or or do you care more about your personal view of the role-playing aspect and, like, who this character is? Like, what do you want to support more? And mm-hmm. I feel like that's sort of been... sort of been forgotten, I think. Because, mm-hmm. yeah. like... I yeah. certainly didn't play Xenoblade X. Like... In the eyes of a role player, like mm-hmm. I still said things that I thought my character would say once I learned there was no consequences, right? Right, right. But I was like, you know, I I wasn't like super into my character, right? You know, and you, what was it, Shulk number two, or what was what was their character? What was his name? I forgot. I mean, you made him Shulk basically, though. <laughs> I made him blonde because that's <laughs> what I, in my mind's eye, I envisioned myself as. If it happened to look like Shulk, all right. Well, he had his voice. I'm pretty sure he had his voice too. Did he? I think so. I think I, I might have. I'm pretty sure I had I was... him on my team at some point. <laughs> you actually had him on your team. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. must have been slaying, dude. He was a powerhouse. <laughs> it was. I played that game a while. I think it was like level fifty or something, mm-hmm. which is all, saying something in that game. That's kind of weird. That level fifty is super high. You would think that like level one hundred. Level is super progression high. is super slow in that game. Really, and it actually is kind of nice. Huh? Yeah. I'm level twenty. I'm like, it took me so long to get here. <laughs> right. Where it's like, but in, in, I, but every time you go past those level fourteen Grexes, you're like, they're a push. You'll them. never be stronger than me. I can now crush you underneath my toe <laughs> because I am, you know, I worked this hard. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. burned it. So I, I think it kind of works in that favor, but the only way they could have gotten away with that, with making level progression absurdly slow, is if the game's worthwhile enough to play until you get to a high level, which I think they did. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's a risk. Because if you make level progression really slow and people don't like the game... They just get bored. Then man, they're like, they're this is... I'm not going to bother, you know? Because people love progression. Right. And all the... I haven't gotten far enough to know whether you can, like... Can you, like, spend finances to make the the main base, like, better? Do you remember? Because I remember there's, like... The, uh, I... Somewhere in the West, there's, like, places that are under construction... I'm wondering if I can like speed up the process of the of new new whatever new, new Mimopolis. <laughs> <laughs> neo new Mimopolis. um in like new new Los Angeles or whatever new, new yeah whatever I it's forgot called. what it's called the new, um new LA yeah yeah and LA and LA okay. or something like that. yeah and LA so uh no there is a there is a area that's being worked on. Mm-hmm. And, like, they call it, like, the Unfinished District or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, that's what they call it. So, that does get occupied. It is okay. finished, quote-unquote, by the end of the game. Okay, and one of the cool. story missions, something you do affects it, and it there's stuff to do there now. Okay, cool. But it's super not the direction you're thinking you're take, they're taking it in, and I really like the direction they took it in. 
but it's very different. That makes me it's, happy. It's not, I like different. It's not exactly what you think is going to happen. I am so, just assuming it's just going to be a no, normal other district. <laughs> right, and assuming that would be incorrect. But you'll see <laughs> what they do with it. Because I, I kind of like that. Um, in terms of actual area, it's a little small to move around in, but it's still very cool, I think, Okay. what they end up doing with it. So, look forward to that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that does get... That isn't just forever, just a slice of pizza that doesn't, <laughs> like, have anything happen I was like, maybe I'm it. supposed to invest money into this at some yeah, point. No. Um, I don't remember there being must it, much investing money into it. But, in terms of skills, I like the way skill progression works. Okay. Because you cannot level up your skill. You I just buy think. new ones. You just buy newer Which parts. Which is kind of ridiculous. Let me just buy a full skill. Yeah. That's just better. Yeah. Or buy an oh, yeah. uh, arm cannon that, you know, has a move you like on it. Because mm-hmm. the way you you have moves, right? The way you get arts for skills is you put various pieces of armor ah, on the okay, body. Okay. And Please tell me you can make, you can like change their colors. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. Yes. They're fully. <laughs> you can change their colors. You can change every, like, color on the entire yes. thing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is something that uh, I've had a lot of fun with. Because oh, I man. love, like, in Subnautica. Uh, when you make a sub or something, uh-huh. uh, you can change the color of it, and you know it would have been easy to make a yellow submarine, but I'm better than that, <laughs> so I just made a, a like a sleek, like futuristic looking submarine. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That looks like that sounds like so much. You, I think I already explained. That I took a super long time making my character. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> you did mention that. actual hours. Yeah, because I like and I, good. I'm glad you got invested. I'm glad that the, all the options they had there were worthwhile for something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember I made I had several designs too. I think I had like two or three. Did you like, like draw any down that you wanted to like kind of go after? Or did you just try to? Like, I, no, I just used the material that they had because I didn't want to <laughs> draw something that I, I just could not make in the game. So right. let me just use the materials that's they've fair, given that's me. That's fair. Though they do give you a lot of leeway. They have. Yeah. Um. For those that don't know, and for the, all two people that are listening to <laughs> yeah. this, I made an old lady as my main c- character, which... That's a hot take. Which a lot of people would say, why the hell would you make a grandma? Including me. Including you. But I'm like, so I made a story for this character, and this is why I sort of personally connect with this character. And I'm, I'm like, all right, let me make a character that is old and is sort of coming... They're not, like, super old, but they're getting closer to the end of their life. And they want to have one last adventure. And this is, like, a veteran of, like, fighting of war, of, like, yeah. war and such. Yeah. And we live in the glory days. And so I'm like, Let me, let's have this lady have their last adventure. And so... They're back for one more adventure. <laughs> they came out of retirement to go for <laughs> one last... It kind of reminds me of One up. last mission. It's like the story in Up, honestly. It's the story in freaking, like, Fast and the Furious and, like he didn't, she didn't and the want to Expendables. Go out. She, didn't, she wanted to go out Dumb with a bang, like not that. in a whimper. Yeah. And so I made this character that is exploring all these worlds and is talking to all these people. And is, like, making friends and such. And it's, like, super wholesome. Because everything I experience and I'm, like, in awe with, and especially in the environments, neat. And, and such, and all the people, she experiences, I get to see that through her eyes, and she's going to value this. She's going to value this, because it's her last adventure. And so I'm, me, as someone that really loves looking at environments and such, gets to sort of also enjoy the fact that I can just stand still and look at a place, and both me and this character can take, take it, it in. in. Yeah. Can just drink it. And I think that's beautiful. It's why I think I've def- I'm defending role playing so much in this game. <laughs> you know, that's weird because before you mentioned this, I would have never thought the character creator was for role playing. Hmm. I and that seems obvious to me now. Like it kind of seems stupid that I would think, oh man, it's you know for. But I always thought it was for make yourself insert character, make it as close to you as you'd like, <laughs> uh, which is why I was always confused when they had green skin. I was like, who, who out there has green skin they're putting on their self-insert character? 
You know, I know when the Game Grumps do it, they always give them the, like, the most the, offensive the, color <laughs> of skin they can, like, purple, like, bright, sear, eye-searing purple and shit like that, but... <laughs> But I thought that was just for the memes, right? Like, hey, if you want to meme around, you can do that. Yeah, but I never yeah. thought of making a character that, like, that, like, you're you're playing as some unknown different character. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And there was a bit of that when I ended up playing Starbound for a while. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know enough about that game, so there's like a role playing aspect of it. It it I think it very heavily influences that because it, it gives your character a backstory. Unfortunately, it gives them the backstory, right? Ah, but okay. depending on what race you are, it's different. Like okay, so that's, uh, that's, there's little and then there's a lot those. of things you can learn about the race that you're playing as. Like mm-hmm. uh, I played as the avians because airplanes. Um, and of birds, of and uh, one thing that the avians do is th- they're uh, they're kind of led by they're like a cult. They're a very religious society, and um, uh, what they do is like there are certain levels, kind of like in um, some like Scientology, I guess you'd say. Uh, and this is what I'm remembering from a while back. But um, and basically, like they do sacrifice, like human or quote-unquote human sacrifice, even though they're all birds, so mm-hmm. bird sacrifice, where they throw birds like themselves off the edge of a cliff. And I think the whole thing is they're birds that can't fly, and that was kind of, um, that's kind of like the religion is like, we used to be able to fly, but then we fell out of favor with God. So now we have to, you know, work our way back into favor with God, and if God loves us, then when we throw you off a cliff, you'll be able to fly. If not... And we'll take your items Yo. when you crash in the bottom. Holy moly. Yeah, and they, every, like, thing they have is super, like, it's a temple or, like, that kind of thing. And it's really fun. And you find, like, these, um, these cities of, like, persecuted avians mm. that, like, have, are running away from the religious kind of areas. And then you find the super religious areas. And they're different places, right? Mm. And it's really cool. Yeah. It sounds like you can really make... You can make your character really unique mm-hmm. and sort of live out that individual's sort of race and life and mm-hmm. such. And that's another one where accents don't really have consequences because you can go into a town and start stabbing people and then kill everybody in the town. And then when you go to the next Davian town, nobody will know anything about it because it's on a different world, right? Because hmm. you're traveling between planets. Hmm. So um, I think that's a big thing that helped was that... Uh, a lot of those actions have consequences. Things uh, were a little bit different. And also, uh, I mentioned Terraria's building. Uh, I didn't really like building in Terraria, uh, but building in Starbound is a lot of fun because they have a ton of unique blocks, and like they're very cool, and they kind of can affect things differently. Like You can make apartments and then have people live in the apartments, right? Mm-hmm. Depending what you make the apartments out of, a different tenant will want to stay there. Hmm. Yeah. From the building material. Yeah. So if you Weird. if you made it like this gross like dark hive thing with a bunch of like evil statues everywhere, or, like a little shadow dude would come in and be like, "Hey, I'll rent this place out." <laughs> and then what a great landlord. <laughs> yeah. And then um, if you make it like a uh, there's this like Japanese esque race uh, of like uh, axolotls kind okay. of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you make a room like a with a tatami mat and like, you know, Japanese like fan lights or stuff like that, mm-hmm. then two things two different kinds of people kind of come in. You can get the uh the axolotl coming in there, mm-hmm. right, to live in like a place similar to his home. Or you can get like the equivalent of a weeb that oh. actually wants to stay in the room. <laughs> which is like really clever, I think, of the <laughs> game because it's like, oh yeah, one well, you know, we would totally are, love to live in are like Are you telling me a weeb is a race? No, there's like there's a human, right? Because there's humans in the game, sure. which I would never play, just because there's so many other races with such cool backstories. Um, mm-hmm. But there's a human who like a human you can, can move into it. You and... see it with the hat that looks like the oh, uh, no. thing, and it's like and it's oh, like no. oh, it's so funny. <laughs> it's but yeah, really it's a funny. human that like is super into axolotl or I'll high lot. I'll read this. Yeah, I'll read this. <laughs> And that was one of the things I got into a lot uh, before the com- my computer couldn't take it <laughs> because <laughs> there were so many moving things on screen. Once I got like a big apartment with a bunch of different people, that it started like stuttering, and I was like, "No!" <laughs> so now I can't run out. You know, That's I can't a, play that. Anymore. That sounds like a it's great game, slow. actually. Uh, 
Landlord Simulator, where you just make rooms and then have tenants that are, like, mm. of other universes. But it wouldn't be realistic unless the tenants are always bitching about something or another. <laughs> My sink is broken because you fucking threw a hammer at it, you moron. You fix it yourself. Uh... That sounds like a fun time. I'd play that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of would too, actually. It sounds pretty fun. Yeah. But yeah, so that's uh, Stop out. open world time. That's cool. All right, you want to take a break? Yes. All Let's right. Let's take a break. All right, we'll go to our sponsors, all zero of them. Yep. <laughs> Toothpaste. Put it on your teeth. You know. <laughs> You've made, what is it? What was your, the four horsemen, or horse horsemen. dog. Horse dog, if you will. I won't. And then you made uh, loot. Yes. And then you started working on kin. <laughs> yep, I and did. That, and then you dropped that. Yes, I did. And then you started... What is this worm thing called? It's going to be called metamorphosis. Right, right, Because that's yeah, what right. your worm's trying to do. Right, right, right. Metamorphosis. And Wait, so, so you're you're making that on pixel art, or what is it called? It's called Pixel Game Maker, something. I think it's just called Pixel Game Maker. Oh, that's Maker. right. You were talking about how you can pl- do platforming stuff. Right, and that's, that's that's what I've wanted. To, I've always wanted to make a like Metroidvania kind of thing. And that would be the Metroidvania, gotcha. um, but you can't really do that because there's no like physics in RPG Maker. Which is why I need Pixel Game Maker. They're made by the same company, of course, because apparently I can't get away from Katakawa. They own me, basically. <laughs> but, um, I don't even know if that's a guy or the company. I just know his name is on it. Uh-huh. But, um, but yeah, so that's that. So metamorphosis. But the and- problem is, I have, like, the early beta version. There's probably a lot of stuff that's gonna change, so I'm kinda like. For one, I have no idea what I'm doing, and it's kinda hard. And for two, I keep trying to make the environments, but nothing, like, turns out the way I want it to. Mm. The first area, I wanted to be a mushroom area. Okay. But I'm having a hard time doing that. I was, like, trying to figure out what I should do for the ground, because there's this thing called, um... And it, I actually learned about it from Minecraft, but it's called, uh... Mycelium. And mycelium is often found on forest floors, and mm. it's, like, a mushroom that's, like, like webbing. And it's just all across the Ew, forest, and it's on. like one organism. Let me look at. It's one. Yeah. What the? But it, it grows and it like grows out, you know, across a lot of area. Mushroom. My seeds. It's with a Y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was trying to put that on the ground because it was like a super mushroom. Ew. Leaf. Yeah. <laughs> look at this dude. Oh wow, that is a lot of that is a lot of my Yeah, it's just like webbing. Oh my, it looks like friggin' spider webs. Right? It's freaky. I'll pass. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's kind of what I wanted to make it, because I what the whole mushroom area is, there's going to be a giant mushroom in the middle, and it's going to have, like, it's like roots kind of extending all mm-hmm. over the area. But that's only one of the biomes, so, you know, whatever, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, so that's, that's metamorphosis. Yes. What is this new thing? Did you ever hear about me and Alex playing Escapism? No. I it's a game I made on paper. And we just what it was like a puzzle game and we just go through it and I I have drawn out something mm. and he just like try to solve the puzzle by like getting items and shit. And it was a lot of fun. We played it I think in middle school. If not, I, no, I think it was in elementary school. That was when I started making the games on paper, right? Right. Uh, this was before Box Wild, if you ever heard about that. No. You've never heard about Box Wild? Jeez, you've got Dude, so many. Alex Gosh, could dang. talk about Box. Alex could talk for days about Box Wild. <laughs> it was just a fun thing where there were a bunch of like little drawings, right? Sure. And it, it was your job to to draw the lines, and you you could only draw straight lines. And if you drew a straight line through something, and you tried to make a rectangles or squares and the game had a requirement for how much uh, lines you could draw and how many rectangles and squares you needed so you had to find where to draw the rect- the lines to get the rectangles and squares and the thing was like it was like as you know it started out with just a bunch of lines and like kind of that but it moved on to me just drawing pictures and like you try to make squares out of like things in the environment and it was, it was really cool. It was like one sheet of paper with a bunch of little compartments. 
And it was like, I made like 40 or something. Oh my goodness, I want to see that. It was, it was super cool. Uh, oh, Hayden ripped it in half, of course. Oh. And, and I was like, uh, because I've worked so long on it, right? Right. And then someone taped it together for me. And then I was trying to get it copied because you can't really play it unless you have a copy of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, someone was trying to draw a guide for it. Alex and someone else, I think, were drawing a guide Aww, for it. Oh, they liked it that much. Yeah, it was, it was That's really cool. wholesome. And there was this guy named Nate, uh, who was like a kind of short kid. I think you knew him, but um, uh, he, me, and him would always just goof off in science class because the <laughs> teacher wasn't really like doing anything. And uh, we'd always, we'd always joke like, "Yeah, what if you know you'd had to do one of these a day in the newspaper, and when you won, like gradually the congratulations started getting like crazier and crazier. Like first they'd send you a letter." And then second, you know, they'd be like, go up to your house and be like, you won Fox Wild! And then the next day they'd br- crush through your living room with a tank and like shoot it and then fire up. Like, this man won Fox Wild. Holy it was It was really funny to me then. It was a lot more amusing to me then, but yeah. Okay, so why'd you mention, you said escapism. Because that's a paper game. And that is the game that I'm recreating on that. Ah, so you're, re- you're creating th- that Box Wild Game. Not the box wild. No, not the escapism. Gotcha, gotcha. Which started off as a paper. Yes. Game. But you're gonna, you're gonna. It's, it's interesting the way I've done it because it still is. Kind of. But yeah, I can show you that. I, I have the tutorial level done, but I'm not proud of it. Um, because it's still buggy a bit. Oh really? Uh, but it's playable, and you can beat it. It's just there are certain parts of it that I want to fix. So mm. you can play that now if you want or whatever. I see. Do you, I think I've already asked this before, I'm not sure. Do you just make these things because you feel the need to? Or, like, what is what is making you want to do this in the first place? Usually I start the process out with, like, having, like, either I want to do something, I'm like, okay, you know, I want to do this, like, I want to get this one objective done. So this one was to recreate escapism. That was my one objective. And then all of a sudden usually within the course of one day, I'm just sitting there, I'm having all these ideas come in about this, like, oh, I could do this, oh, I could do this, oh, I could, like, add a story to it where two people are playing the game, and, like, you get to learn about them through them playing the game. Oh, wow, and then and then you can sort of learn how the game works. Yeah, but and, like, you're one of the people playing the game, the other person's the person making the game, and they're just having a grand old time doing it, and the word escapism means to, like, escape from like, trying to get away from your normal everyday life. So these two people are co-workers, and they're playing the game to not have to do work. <laughs> and it's going to show later on, like, that actually starts affecting them badly during work. Because at the beginning, they're like, oh, we've got no work to do, we may as well do this. But then when they start, like, escapism becomes more of, like, a, a thing that they want to do instead of just, whatever, let's do this. Mm. Then it actually starts taking up more of their lives and shit. And that's that's all that's all ideas it's, it's I had just... constantly coming in through the day, and I'm like, that's really cool, right? <laughs> so I got to do that. Wow. So the, so all these things are just like, here's a cool idea that just came, mm. and I need to put it down on paper. Yeah. Or and, that. Or or program or yeah. whatever. Wow. And 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 this is sort of the trouble I think a lot of creative people have is actually following through. With the ideas that they have. For example, Ken, and maybe, I hope not, but maybe... Um, well, it isn't clear to me that you didn't follow through with Ken, but more so you felt that the direction that it was going in wasn't something you would be able to conceptualize. Because that's, like that's that, what but sort I of like, like, like from I, my I recognize that like it wasn't, it wasn't like ominous and scary enough for me. I don't know how, like, ominous and scary I would have to make it, but I wanted it to be, like, genuinely, like, kind of creepy, right? And, like, right. if you're playing it, I wanted you to have that sense of dread. Mm-hmm. But I was like, it's not really scary. Like, you know, I can see through it. And the problem is I'm on the back side of it, so I'm looking like, okay, the event and this monster comes in right here. This event happens and this surprise comes in right here. And when I'm playing it, I'm not like... <sighs> You know, I'm just, just like, like, okay, good, it actually came in when I wanted well, it to. Well, I mean, you're the creator. It's right. kind of hard but to that's be surprised the problem. by your own like, You need... A- I wanted to... I, I didn't know, like, I wanted it to be creepy, but I also feel like I don't know if I can do that. Like, I don't know if I'm good enough at creepy to make it, like... I mean, it's plus, my to... art is kind of bad, 
like, so I don't know if I could convincingly draw something terrifying, you know? I think... I'm trying to think of an example where something... Where something just doesn't look that great, but still invokes the correct emotion. Yeah, but fear is a little bit different, because it's like, you have to, like, fully invoke that emotion, or else it's just not, like... I feel like it's not as important, or, like, it doesn't have as much as... Let me just think. Slender Man? Yeah! Yeah, you're right about that. The models in that game are kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, the one... Well, yeah, you like the trees even, even and Even Slenderman himself isn't that scary. It's just, yeah. That's the thing, you're not spending that much time looking at him. Right, because you're not supposed but to. But the thing whatever. is, like, is that the same way with, like, my game? Like, I don't know. Ib looked good. Ib, Ib was precious. But I, I feel... Yeah, I was about to say, it doesn't look bad. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was pretty great. <laughs> Maybe having to have the technical skills in a scary sort of environment is needed. I think it is. And well, besides like the music aspect of right, it. Right, right. And, which, and the sound I, design. I feel like that's important. The sound too, design too. Like, like that's equally as important as the the visuals. Right, right, right. I'm just trying to think of like a shitty. <laughs> I don't play many bad games. I like. I usually go in. Yeah, me neither. To I don't have like bad games on my computer because yeah, yeah, I yeah. always like hear about other people from other people that it's great, it's like, and then I'm like, ah, I still don't want to buy it because I don't like spending money. And then eventually I'm like, sure, but it's ninety percent off, <laughs> and like I don't have anything else to do. What is the fine? And then it becomes you're like, oh, it's good. like oh wow, this is great. <laughs> Why was I ever like? Oh. Amnesia looked great. Amnesia actually looked pretty good for its time. And it still looks good now. I I am bothered by the art style of Amnesia. I don't know what it is. I just don't like it that much. I really? remember not liking it. I like, and this is going to be a hot take, uh, I, I like the look of Machine for Pigs. I just think it's I bad. Just the <laughs> <laughs> but it's a bad game. It's a bad game, but it looks nice. And like I like the aesthetic. It's just, uh, unfortunately, the game isn't, you know, good enough to... Yeah. I have to replay. I don't remember why it was so bad. I, maybe I didn't like the linearness of it. I think it's the linearness. Probably. I mean, like Amnesia: The Dark Descent was kind of linear, but like there was like a, there was a, there were moments where there would be like a hub sort of mm -hmm. area, and then you would go out to other rooms to sort of I figure out. I think the a puzzle. problem with it was um, a problem with a lot of horror games is it kind of felt checklisty. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, let me just. Uh, Flip these three switches, and, like, you know in your head, okay, when I go to switch two, there's going to be a scary thing that happens after I switch switch two, so I guess I'll just expect that ahead of time. And then you switch switch two, and you're just like, oh, no, a scary thing, and now you have to run away from this while you're trying to get the third switch, and it's like, got it. It's like, mm. I don't know, that's not scary, per se, that's just, like... Oh, well, it's a hassle. Now I'm gonna die. Yeah, I... and it's like, oh, it's a restart. It's like yeah. your mind isn't immersed in yeah. the story. Outlast does it phenomenally well, <laughs> I think. In terms of like Heidi, like, yeah, loves the hell out of that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. She's replayed it so much she could probably play it blind, to be honest. But like that, that's an exaggeration. Like there's a game it. that I think doesn't feel annoying. I think it, it really invokes, like, high adrenaline when it needs to be, and, like, quiet stillness when it needs to be as well. Like, I, I'll never forget, like, the moment you leave the building and go outside in the storm, and it's just, like, pitch black. But there's, like, things... Is it, this Outlast? This is still Outlast. Is and that when the Wall Rider... Because I remember Heidi told me the ending of that game. I, I don't know. Don't... No, this is pretty early on. Oh, it's, like, okay. after you run away from the Scissors guy... Okay. Um, it's like storming and thundering outside, mm -hmm. and it's just pitch black. But you're like your eyes, even in the game, sort of play with you, and you're like, "Is there something in front of me? Is there something in front of oh, me?" Shit. And it's just like, the do you worst. actually? Is that actual outside, or is it just like you? Like it's like uh, it's like an enclosed, like gated area oh, outside. So you still can't you, get away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember why I mentioned that. I think we were talking about. Uh, just, like, immersion? Yeah, yeah, we were talking about immersion. I don't know, maybe just... It just seems like something you need to be carefully balancing. Mm. Where you don't... Balance of, like... Don't be mechanically, like, 
in in the way like having game too many game over screens is annoying. Yeah. Like don't yeah, die. That's too, why I wanted uh Ken to be really easy if you were, you know, focusing on difficulty, Ken would be like absurdly easy. Right. Which is probably something I haven't done in my past games. I've accidentally made them hard. <laughs> <laughs> Whether I realize it Good or old not. Horse Dong, man. Horse Dong was I, I've played that game a lot from start to finish. Whew. It's a tricky game. It's <laughs> tough. And that doesn't hurt, or it doesn't help that the third boss, freaking every time I fight him, like, I have to make sure I don't go in this certain place or else it bugs out and the whole, like, thing won't let me kill him. <laughs> like, god damn it, no! <laughs> like, one of the things that allows you to kill him will stop, and it's like, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm glad I made the game, but I'm not. I'm not proud of the game itself. I'm That's, glad that I made a game. That you completed it. Yeah, that I completed it. Which but, is more than a uh, lot of people can say. It was say. so much better in my head. <laughs> it was so much better in my head. And that's the that's the, always the hardest part, I think, as as creative people. Because, because your mind's always filled with these ideas. It's, like, perfect in your head. Yeah. But then, like, visualizing it in the real world is always the hardest goddamn hardest thing and it's mm-hmm. true for musicians as well like sometimes you hear like a really good melody and you hear mm-hmm. these great orchestras behind it and then you sit down and try to do it and you're like this is shit <laughs> <laughs> this oh. is not what i heard in my head right um except i feel like it's a little bit easier for musicians i think because I you're think able so. to individually pick out like what is this instrument doing and how does it you can sort of look at chords and such. Whereas, like, visuals, there's so many things you can do. I guess I guess you're right about that. The only reason I would have thought music would be harder is because I just... My mind isn't made for, like, understanding music. Like, mm-hmm. you can pick out... Like, you can hear a sound and be like, oh, that's a B-flat, you know, it's, an, it's a little, you know, whatever. It's well, a little flat it's, or it's, sharp. It's not even so much as, like... But when I hear a sound, I'm like... Is that a... Tuba? <laughs> you know? I see. It's like in being able to distinguish the individual instruments and such. But, like, or anything about the sound, like... Ah, uh, I see. I see. Yeah. Because generally, chords work and, like, notes work relative to other notes. Is sort of what But, like, you could hear content. one and still name it, couldn't you? I wouldn't be able to pick out a D from the top of my head. I would have to have someone play it. What, what, it, what usually matters is how that note is relative to other notes, mm. which makes chords. Which is obviously all of music. It's like, <laughs> here's a triad, here's a, here's just an interval. Mm. The distance between the two notes is what sort of, I think, give those notes context. Which is why I th- is making I'm making the claim that I think, may perhaps conceptualizing music's a little bit easier, mm. and conceptualizing like. Uh, visual art and such. Mm. The only issue with sort of... I think you have a lot more freedom, though. Because you say that, and it's you're right, that, like, when you have, like, an image of, oh, you know, I want this worm, and its mouth is going to be filled with teeth, and it's going to have fins, you know. Sure. You could do anything with that. Like, you could yeah. there are so many different looks that it can have, but for music, you get less freedom. I think I actually agree with that, yeah. Um, it's like... A violin's gonna sound like a violin, no matter how you put it, unless mm-hmm. you have them mechanically do something different that you wouldn't normally, or you have it re- be recorded in a strange way or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say that's part of why art, in the visual sense, is is very tricky, because it's like I have a form in my head, but I can't quite know what color it is. Or but that's the thing; some people are really good at that, though. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I think my brother's probably a lot better at it than I am. Um, the point I was... I think I was making an earlier point. Because uh, I'm not I'm not saying that writing music is easy. Because... Mm. Or, like, visualizing... Not audibly... No, I get you. I get you. In your head. A- audioizing? I have no idea. We'll workshop it. We'll have <laughs> yeah. it done by two, so don't yeah. worry. Um, it has to do with timbre. If you know what timbre is, it's like... I've heard of timbre. Timbre is like the... 
the type of sound that an instrument makes. So, so like you'd be able to distinguish a trombone from a tuba. There's clear there's clearly a, a clear difference. Mm-hmm. They might be playing the same note, but timbre wise, it's very different. And that's that's what timbre is. Yeah, you can go to town on that. I'm I am, dude. Just make sure you eat over the table. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Where are my manners? I have to get the crumbs like, on the table. <laughs> with with I think with technology becoming increasingly crazier, and the fact that you're able to sort of create sounds, electronic sounds from nothing, I think is sort of opening the the gates to something similar to visual art, where it's like, I want to create something with a mechanical timbre, and it's like no instrument can do that, so let me create it. Mm. I think that's where we're starting to end. Where we're starting to enter in the realm where music's starting to get harder, much mm-hmm. harder. And, yeah, and it's like you're. But what that also means is that you're you're able. You have the uh, the ability to more precisely make what your your head hears, mm-hmm. like that close. If you're able, if you know the engineering, if you're good, yeah, you get to know like all the the ins and outs of whatever your tools you're using. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So maybe I might be... I, I could be wrong. In, I don't think one's easier or harder than the other. I think it's the conclusion I'm starting to make now. But eventually it won't be. Probably now it's not. Yeah, um, yeah. I think eventually it'll be pretty much dead even in terms of difficulty of fully realizing conceptual ideas. Which is to say a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The creative process is nuts. I, I think I've talked to you about... Um, comparing drawing to music mm-hmm. have i done that with you not really okay so i don't think i don't think i remember it so but go over the beats and i'll see if i remember my, it. my composition lessons have been really recently have been like really intriguing and i'm mm-hmm. and i'm able to draw parallels to like visual arts and drawing and such because we're finally starting to talk about form and and what does it mean to draw an outline for music so it's like, all right, you want to have an A, B, A section. That's an example, but it's mm-hmm. not very interesting. Or it's not very helpful in, in terms of, like, exactly how you want it to play out. Mm-hmm. So uh, an advice that my professor had given me is, like, how about you draw... You How about you write out every single measure of the entire piece, but instead of writing notes, draw a line bet- in the measure of who's going to be playing at that moment. So your whole, you can just have a, a row of, of sheet music of just lines and, and other lines of like, all right, these two are going to enter, these two are going to enter, these four are going to go together, and then there's oh, like be it one looks instrument. like in um in like a lot of the music programs, you have the lines of like that kind of thing, like when um certain thing enters, so you can see which tracks like I think I what know, instruments start talking. Yeah, there's a lot of YouTube videos with that sort of thing. It's like, all right, this this guy's entering and this guy's mm-hmm. entering. And he's and my professor was like, this is one of the ways in which you can have an idea and, and sort of realize it without having the notes to it. And obviously you can make edits mm-hmm. and and such. And he's and he's talked about how how Beethoven sort of he has so many sketches. And we call them sketches as if they were drawings. And they sort of are. But what what are they like? They're just like there might be like full measures of just notes, and then there would be like a big X over it, and then, <laughs> and then he would like have something else and stuff. And this yeah. is like before you had like the musical grades can blow me away. <laughs> like the the they old have, composers. It is insane to just think about their patience. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like to get a final draft, how many drafts did you have to have? They were maniacal. Like you have to be kind yeah. of insane because mm-hmm. like. Oh, let me change this one note in this in this chord that I had. How am I going to undo ink? You're just gonna have to go to a new sheet of paper or some shit. Yeah. And then just make sure you get the perfect measure, and then you're like, all right, this is the perfect measure. And you leave that aside, and then you keep and then you keep moving forward, and then eventually you have a bunch of sheets. Yeah, and then of the you perfect have to pick thing, out and then the... you and you put it all together as if it were a Yeesh. puzzle. Speaking of puzzle, this is I, I'm just going on a rant right now, but this reminds me of rant to me, baby. <laughs> In Final Fantasy VII, 
the composer who wrote, uh, well, he's the composer of the whole thing, but when he wrote Safi Roth's theme. Safi Roth. If you listen to it. Safi Roth. If you listen to. Safi Roth. Safi Roth. <laughs> How do you, do you pronounce them Safi Roth? It's Safi Roth. Safi Roth. S E F. I R O T H. Sephiroth. As in Seraphim, and then Oth. Because that's Sephiroth. what he's based on, his design is a Seraphim. Okay. Um, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Um, if you listen to the theme, it's kind of weird. Like, the form is rather odd, and there seems to be ideas that kind of come out of nowhere, but it all lays itself out fantastically yeah you've to told it. me that this is like our genius I, song and i've been like i like it but i fucking love the fact that the composer didn't write it from beginning to end instead he would just wake up one morning and he'd, be, mm-hmm. he'd have an idea and he would just write a measure of it and would just leave it and then he would have this sev- he would, this would happen several times so he had a bunch of different measures so he had that a bunch had of different no, he had no idea how they'd fit together and then he eventually he sort of he, he basically snipped it up Mm. And then arrange them in a certain way, and it just fucking worked. That is, that is cool as the hell. <laughs> coolest thing to write a piece, mm. <laughs> and it, it isn't like the piece isn't like incomprehensible. It's like suddenly it, the sort of chaotic side of this character is seen in the music, or heard in the music, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it's just. There's so many ways to go about writing things, and and it's very similar to like drawing and art, where it's like, let me just draw the general shape of what I think I want, mm-hmm. and let me just sort of, let me just put some things together to, to see what I think I'm, I'm wanting, and like, you can have a general shape, but then eventually it, it makes you make something, but it sort of fits the mold of said shape. It's the same with music. Mm-hmm. You have an outline, or you just have puzzle pieces in the sort of grand scheme of the thing. And I think... Yeah, that's something you can't do with art, I don't think. You don't think... As you easily. Can, <laughs> you don't or, think like, you can... visual art, sorry. Mm. But I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, something where you're, you're like... You piece I mean, it together. Actually, I might, but it's, it's different. Like, there are certain times when I'm, like, drawing a picture, right? Mm-hmm. Where I, I stop drawing the one part of the picture, and I just start drawing the other. But a lot of times it's to give context, so I realize, like, if a character's looking, like, over in a direction to see a tree, well, I gotta draw the tree so I know where to put his eyes, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, so I, I move from his face, which has nothing on it right now, so he can't breathe or hear, right. uh, to make that tree. So it's, like, different aspects of the art that you're creating sort of needs to lay itself out so that you're able to sort of finish in this other area mm-hmm. as far as I can tell but but I think that's completely different yeah because it's more contextual whereas yeah. this was sort of like not quite ra- well it was kind of random <laughs> it's a little random yeah I mean it, I think like, the way he wrote it is uh, mirrors a lot of how the song sounds itself like kind of all over the place but like it somehow definitely weird. had a common thread and like right, right, right. powerful like kind of yeah I, I, I don't know what got me going on this rant about mm. like my composition lessons but it's been all fascinating the whole creative process mm-hmm. is it's so it's it's complex and there's so many ways to go about it and it's I think it's a matter of figuring out what works for you what are you doing I'm messing with the dinosaur <laughs> I'm three years old and this is better than a Nintendo DS <laughs> um I was actually gonna mention that um I recently I was I was bored at work right uh-huh. uh, tutoring uh, because no one was showing up because I guess I'm a terrible tutor or something but uh, anyway um, hey I mean there's no other reason people wouldn't right unless they are smart or, uh, something. or they're just or they're just lazy people or they don't want to go to a tutor and admit that they might not be as prepared for the lesson as they thought they were at they're first. taking this very personally <laughs> no no listen. <laughs> Listen. Anyway, so I okay. so I was on Wikipedia, um, mm-hmm. and I I don't know what I was looking up, but I decided to just like look up um inspiration, like kind of like what do like people who have like studied it think? There are like a few papers on inspiration, like artistic inspiration, hmm. and like 
everybody's like, we don't know how it works. We don't know how it works out. Like, we have a few ideas. There are a few rules that we can probably say for it. But it's pretty much all internal. It's not like you can cause yourself to get inspired or anything. And we don't know, like, mentally, like, what What's part happening? of the brain, like, it affects or whatever. Which is interesting, which is why I think the reason I like, like, creativity and, like, that stuff so much is because I'm kind of, like, pragmatic to the point where a lot of the interesting stuff in the world kind of doesn't, like, excite me. Like, I don't think psychics are real. I don't believe in God. There's no, like, mystical magic, right? I don't believe in magic or ghosts. So I'm not, like, none of that really, like, cool, like, out of the, like, um, the world kind of, like, things that, like, you, like, are go much deeper and we don't know a lot about. None of that, I think, is, like, real. But, like, for inspiration, to me, it's like it's like magic, right? It's like creating something out of nothing, hmm. and it's like the thing I still don't understand. It's like the closest thing to magic that right. you can believe in, but mm-hmm. don't know how it works. Yeah, but I don't know how it works, and that's why I'm fascinated in it, because I have no idea how the hell, why I am I get inspired by something, but, you know, the this prissy girl at my school just, you know, doesn't, you know, have any brilliant ideas in her head that she wants to put on paper every so often, you know? Like, what, why is that different, you know? Does she just ignore them? Or does, you know... And this is just a hypothetical person. I mean... But... I, I wouldn't say that... I don't think it would come out of nowhere. I, I suppose right? it's based on the way that you've, you've lived and the, based on the things that you deem important. Right, but why then is it so random? Why doesn't it show up when, you know... So I'm like, why doesn't it show up on cer- under certain conditions? Why am I just sitting there one day and I'm like, you know, that'd be really cool. Huh. You know what? You know, and then all of a sudden all these ideas start flooding my head out of nowhere. And it's like, why doesn't, why don't they just like, why didn't it happen the other day or something? You know, when I was just hmm. sitting there bored out of my mind. I, I think I'm why is it happening that. now? You know? And of course, it's it's all based on my experiences and based on things I know, but right? But like, what? Like, I never literally making it happen. Yeah. Like, but why is it starting now and not right and not some other day? Yeah. And, and then you can maybe you can go into like why how much was, rest you've got, what you've eaten. What you've yeah, rested. but like, does that matter? Yeah, or doesn't and, it? And, 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 and we don't know. And you you stated that you tried looking this stuff up and you haven't found anything. Well, the the Wikipedia article, which to be fair, it's Wikipedia, but also <laughs> they do link you to articles. Uh, right. Wikipedia said, admittedly, there aren't that many studies scientific on studies on it because they're kind of like it's such a strange because it's such a in personal and internal <clears throat> process. It's like what even constitutes as being inspirational, right? It's like it. It's based on whatever the person says is inspirational, and that's not a very good parameter because people yeah. aren't reliable. <laughs> well, I, I see you have a lot of faith in the human race, John. <laughs> <laughs> because you can never trust anyone. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no, but, like, really, people d- often don't even understand themselves or why they well, act yeah, like they exactly. act. And it's like, how could we possibly trust when they mean that they've been inspired or they don't? They just think that they've been inspired. Because mm-hmm. that's the thing. I don't think you think you're inspired. You just are. Yeah. And that's that's very difficult to measure. <laughs> if not impossible. I don't know. Right. I don't know enough science to wrap my head around that. There we go. <laughs> that's what's worth for me. That's that's my that's my magical light in the distance. Mm-hmm. Learning mm-hmm. about what the hell makes that shit work. Yeah. I think figuring answering that would be such a a good thing for humanity. I don't know if it would be. You don't think so? Yeah, well the problem is um it's kind of like this like it is getting pretty freaking um into like uh the ethic not ethics like um nihilism or not philosophy? sort of nihilism but uh philosophy in general it's like well, if we have, if we don't have anything else to look forward to, then what's the point, right? Like, if we can't advance anymore because we haven't learned, which is why it's so important to have something we don't know about. Because if we don't know about something, we want to find it out. If we know about something, we don't care about it anymore, do we? 
So if we can't progress any further with our knowledge, then why is humanity still around? Just to kind of Wait, what does that sit have to there do? and do nothing? What does that have to do with inspiration? Well, if we learn about inspiration, then what is left for humanity to figure out? Because we, we've already... Because for me, it would be a problem, right? Because if I find out what it is, and like, oh, it's just this thing going on the brain, you know? Just like, you know, when you learn about, you know, love. Oh, well, love's great and all, but it's kind of actually just this one thing in the brain that makes you want to have sex. And, you know, you don't have to believe it's that, but... I still don't understand how in understanding the mechanics of inspiration would take away... Because then it's not magical anymore. It's like you peeked behind the curtain and now you're not like, wow, it's this, you know, amazing thing that's producing ideas... You can be like, okay, well, we could just make a machine to do what I'm doing. If we know exactly how to get it to work in my mind, we can just replicate it and a machine do it. And then I don't have to put through the work of, you know, imagining all this stuff. And, you know, that's a little bit ridiculous, right? Trying to make a machine think exactly like the human brain. But if we know the mechanics of it, it's not too far away to assume that, okay, well, you know, why do I need to, you know, create all these things when we know exactly how creation works and... You know, I mean, I guess my problem with that idea is that if, if we learn the mechanics of inspiration, it doesn't make the ideas from said inspiration any less chaotic. Because, or does it? Because if we learn that, you know, oh, it's actually, you know, it's on a certain cycle that you think about this thing. So if you experience this thing, then in three and a half weeks your brain has a random thing that brings it up again, then you can be like, okay, well, I'll know what I'll get inspired by now. So it's not chaotic. I know what caused my inspiration, and I know why I'm getting inspired but by it. But you don't know what what's the thing, or what's, why, what is why the inspiration going to lead to? Why couldn't you pretty much just a guess then at that point? You'd be like, well, let's see, you know, I was out in the pond, you know, wherever, and then... Because of that, I can think, wow, I've been wanting to do this lately, so it's probably just going to be, you know, something having to do with the pond, and that takes the chaotic, I think, nature of it away. Hmm. I'd have to think more about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is pretty yeah, in-depth, <laughs> and, like, even I don't know 100% about it, because, like, I think it would be cool to find the inner workings of it, but it would take the magic away for sure, and, like, hmm. I don't know if some that's something I'd appreciate or not. <laughs> And, and there are sort of things, I think, how I describe it, that just can't be explained Yeah. in terms of, that sort of have that very similar magic of inspiration. I like, hope you're right, because please, tell me. Because, like, we've, already, we've talked so much about art, mm -hmm. but there is sort of an otherworldly aspect to art mm -hmm. that can't be put into words due to the mechanical limitations of language, I think. Right, right. And I and I think it's why I think it's why art is so damn important. Because mm -hmm. it's able to express things that we wouldn't be able to through language alone. And it's it's kind of similar to the, the concept of the magistry of inspiration like we were just talking about. Um, and I, I guess that's why I'm just drawing this parallel because I, I see similar aspects of sort of things that come out of nowhere mm -hmm. like there are just some works of art that upon looking at in real life that sort of just take you back and there is sort of a mythical mysticism to mm -hmm. that and you is, think if, even if we knew about inspiration and like how it was made we'd still be like i think we would you know? still be like in awe mm -hmm. even if we knew the mechanics of it right because it's like we understand the concept of like blood cells in our body and how there's a lot of automatic things mm -hmm. that go on in our body that's still fascinating as hell that we're still just running right right because yeah. even though we know exactly what muscles you know we could learn rather exactly right. what muscles we're using and exactly what's happening you know it doesn't take the mysticism out of you know right it's like i can't believe and getting stronger and you know our bodies it's like evolving I, I can't like believe the utility of thumbs <laughs> Thumbs are so good. Can goddamn, we talk about thumbs for a goddamn second? Thumbs? thumbs are freaking great. I don't think they get enough credit they really for being don't. literally the inciting like factor that humans are able to do shit. <laughs> like, oh my like, god. What a useful tool that yeah. this, this fat chunk 
<laughs> on the weird side of, like... I always hate thumbs because they're hard as hell to draw, but dude... They're so useful. Yeah, they're so useful. Like, you... you okay, it wouldn't, wouldn't be that weird if you just, like, got rid of the thumb and it's just, like, this straight line right mm -hmm. here. Yeah. But instead you got this this cancer thing. <laughs> this mutation. Hey, hey, you watch your way, the way you talk about thumbs. <laughs> Like, and just the amount of things that you're able to do now that you have thumbs is insane. Mm -hmm. Just because we know how it works doesn't take away from the mysticism. <laughs> I mean, of, that's the of thing. It kind of does. You think so? Because when you're, you know, building a cabinet like the the good Christian man you are, okay. and you're, you know, you're putting your hard work into it, and you finally build the cabinet, do you think, wow, I'm sure glad I had thumbs, or else I couldn't have made this cabinet from scratch. No, you're like, you don't care. Well, it's, it's hard because to say. Because you know you have thumbs. You know what they can do, and you don't care that you have thumbs well, anymore. Well, you don't know all the things that they could do, because its ability is insane. Done. That's nah. all that it can do. <laughs> well, you, don't, you haven't talked about its speed and, <laughs> and how, how it can get stronger and all that. I don't know. I just have a hard time believing that... Cause you, you, you bring up that instance in which the person's not appreciative of the thumb. Right. But maybe that's a lack of, like, self-awareness and, like, conscientiousness of how... Or maybe they've just gotten used to it, right? And maybe. And they're no longer, like, excited. I that... mean, that's sort of how anything works in terms of, like, if I look at this chair, it's not going to change. Yeah. It's mysticism is, is... But doesn't that bother you that the more you get used to something, the, like... The, the less magical it is. Because that bothers me. Like, we're never going to experience the, like, the magic of like playing a game for the first time. Not the specific game, right? Yeah, it's like that. It's like, mm -hmm. you'll never, you know, it's like chasing the dragon and, you know, drugs. Whenever, whenever someone takes the drug, they always have, like, this great experience for the first time, right? right? It's never going to be. I think. I, I've never had drugs, but... Um, but no, then not one drug, not a single <laughs> drug. Um, but when um, when they do it again, it basically they don't get as high. It's as like they water, a little bit more watered down. Right. So they're like, but even if it's the same amount or more, right? And it's like they're they're, they're trying that. to chase that first time that they ever did it, hmm. but they're never gonna get to it because their body's just gotten used to it, and that's a more like physical version of it, but. I think it applies to many things in non-drug life. So you think that not understanding where inspiration comes from is what is sort of an appeal to it. That it's sort of random. Yes. And that we're not able to understand its sort of nature. Therefore, making every time that you are inspired, like, special. Yes. I do okay. think that, exactly. I can see that. Okay. Wow. We went, like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Went a lot of directions. I don't know how we got to thumbs. <laughs> Dude, thumbs are great, man. I don't care how we got to thumbs. I love them. They're great. Oh. Very useful. Dude, I'd trade the language center in my brain for thumbs if I had to. <laughs> I mean, you already have them. Yeah, you're right. I have them both. I don't want to give you the right. I have a second thumb. <laughs> I have a second thumb yeah. on each hand. <laughs> if, if two are good, then four must be better. <laughs> well, there we go. Mm hmm well, besides the uh, the escapism project, is there mm. anything else you're working on? Yeah, so uh, I'm working on another comic, and I know I shouldn't be, but this time <laughs> I got paper. That's pretty cool. What's uh, what was the other comic called? Title wise, uh, was I title? I was going between titles. I think it was gonna be something akin to like Drifting Feathers or something like that. Ooh. Uh, so the first probably, like, the first image would just be him standing in front of, like, uh, just in the street, kind of, like, uh, what the hell was his name? Kitron, standing in the street, and there would be feathers all around. Inside the feathers, you'd see the faces of the other characters, and mm -hmm. he'd just be kind of, like, lost there, and, like, they'd be swirling around him. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know, also, because I'm, like, that's kind of, like, a dumb name, but whatever. What was you the know? other titles that you were thinking about, if any? I honestly, like, just super, like, generic ones that describe the story, like, angels and demons or something like that. Like, just, like, I, I don't know. 
I didn't have a lot in mind. <laughs> mm-hmm. I wasn't focusing on the title, which, you know... You're just working I on I feel like art. happens a lot, but... Uh, <laughs> that actually happens to me very often with music, where mm-hmm. I just write the piece, and I'm like, now I need what a title. What does it need a title? <laughs> <laughs> what, do I have to, con- like, <laughs> explain my entire piece in, like, one word or, you know, yeah. a few words to everybody? You know, why, why is it on my burden? Yeah, it's kind of You work. tell me what, you're, <laughs> what the title is, goddammit. <laughs> Oh no! Um, so you're working on another comic? Yes. This one is the one I actually had. I was making before I made, um, and I've done it a few times. But this time I'm doing it again, and it's going to be different because there's no reason it's going to be different this time. I just hope it is. So, okay. I mean, I'm sure there is reason because it's like let me explore. Well, it. I've, I've got a whole ways. comic finished, so now I guess. Like, I've got a whole comic finished in the past, so now I can... I can't believe, How many pages did it have? Like, about 150. Oh my god. god. No more. That's so insane. I yeah, struggle with two pages. Yeah, and it's dog shit. Ugh. You don't like it? I kind of like it. I just... Well, after you said the thing about, um... About, uh, what's-his-face seeming too villainous, I've, I've thought about that, and I'm like, oh you're totally god. right. I'm he's so... way... He's way... Like, that's not how I should have wrote, written him at all, and I, like, already thought of a few better ways to write him. Like, I want him to be, like, constantly crying the entire time. Hmm. Like, he's doing it or something, or, like, constantly asking, uh, Kitrin, like, questions, like, am, am, like, this is right, right? Like, what I'm, I'm doing, I deserve this, right? Hmm. That kind of thing. Um, just anything to make him seem less villainous, but, so you were right, you know, at first I was like, I don't know, but yeah, no, I just wanted him to seem crazy, kind of, which was wrong, um, I should have thought about it, especially with a sensitive subject like that, but, Mm. uh, I still like, like, I still had my ideas in mind for the other arcs, but, like, if the beginning, if the first part isn't gonna be that interesting, I don't wanna continue on with it, you know? Damn. Um, and, like, I, I had ideas for, like... The second arc would be with uh, the main bad guy would be another. Uh, it would be an angel, right? Sure. Um, the third arc they'd be hunting down kind of like a serial killer, which would be the demon. And then the fourth arc would be um, they'd have um, uh, Kitrin. Uh, they're basically Kitrin would be um, like at a sports festival, right? Mm-hmm. And then right after it, there's this random ass girl from the other school who asks him out, right? Um, and this is, you know, when Kitrin and Kel are getting pretty close. Um, and then Kitrin's like, well, this is kind of sudden, like, I don't want to, and she's like, why does it, like, matter? Like, that's why people go out with each other is to find if they're right for each other, right? Right. And he's like, uh, like, he can't, like, dispute her points. So he's like, I, I guess we can, like, try or something, you know? Hmm. Um, and then she's a demon. Uh, she's a oh, succubus, right? Nice. Uh, but um, but the way the way uh, she works is she just like she's uh I think a hypochondriac I think that's the people who write like hate pain no I think that's the people who um who like think they have sicknesses when they don't um but she she like despises pain right she's all about you know not getting hurt and like feeling good and that kind of thing and then as the thing go uh goes on you know uh. She, uh, because she's a demon, she has to kill people to, like, remain alive. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and so she's had tons of boyfriends, and she's killed them all. Mm -hmm. Um, because, you know, she has to to keep living. But the thing is, when she kills them, they feel good, so, like, the question's like, is it wrong? Mm -hmm. That she's, you know, killing, like, even if they agree to it, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they feel so good around it that they're fine with that kind of thing. Sure. And it's like, eh? But the, so then that's, basically yeah. Kel and her fight, and um, because angels are meant to, like, made to kill demons, sure. uh, Kel is the upper hand and all that stuff. Then that happens, and then I had, like, the vague idea of uh, another arc after that one. So mm-hmm. yeah, I had, I had five arcs of that planned out, um, and the first arc was the one with um, the, uh, the uh, Gil, the guy's friend, pretty, pretty much going crazy. Um, and attacking the school. Then the second one is the angel. Third one, demon. Fourth one, also sort of a demon. Fifth one would probably be human, who's the main antagonist. And mm-hmm. That kind of thing. And then there would be this uh, B plot with um, uh, the detective. Right, right. I remember you, you hinted at that at the very end of the first mm-hmm. comic. Yeah. 
the the beginning of the the next part or the next arc would be the um the that detective interviewing people uh like interviewing uh Kitrin mm-hmm. and that kind of thing cuz he wants to know what the hell happened right mm-hmm. he's asking friends of the uh the attacker and that kind of thing gotcha. but uh then of course Kitrin lies through his teeth and shit but yeah because he was like, there and <laughs> some punk ass kid yeah. well there we go that's actually insane that you've laid out that much in your head. Mm, but, uh, <laughs> I will. That's some level of foresight. But I, I, I damn, I didn't mean to crush it <laughs> with my I mean, criticism. Who's going to read that shit? Who's going to read uh, the 160 pages of line paper bullshit that uh, oh honestly wasn't laid out that great and, like, had a, a lot of weaknesses? Like, I liked writing it, and I thought it was pretty decent, and I still think it's not horrible, but... Mm. Eh, yeah. Well, that's a, that's something that I'll have to put to the wayside. Maybe in the future, you know, if I become really good at doing it, I'll remake it, which I hate remaking things. Um, you just want to make the thing and then move yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. I want to make the thing, and then if I make another thing, I want it to just be, like, a sequel or something. I don't want to remake the goddamn thing. Like <laughs> That's why I, I don't get how the game industry can remake games so much. I'm like... Doesn't it drive you insane that you're just retreading the same path and not having anything original to say? Hmm. Well, I mean, it's different people that are probably working on it, so it's like right, right. people that are inspirational about said I guess. original, I and suppose. like they can you know improve in certain ways, right? And just make right. it look better, I guess. But yeah, it's not quite a one to one, but but so the new comic I'm making because I think that's where we're getting at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so. It's uh some I think it's gonna be called like the next step or something like that. Um so basically the world is basically a super um super like hyper uh consumerist kind of like thing where there's like businesses run everything, right? Sure. And government doesn't have that strong of a power and it's like super America basically thing. Okay. Um so what happens in Super America is since the government doesn't have a lot of thing and the law is kind of put under business, uh, what happens is a lot of times uh, people can uh, try to assassinate, like CEOs try to assassinate each other, right? Hmm. So that uh, they can get rid of their competition. Hmm. Um, so what has happened is bodyguarding has become a pretty like profound profession for like protecting all the executives in a company and all that. So we go to this guy. Uh, so this, uh, it's probably gonna, his name's probably gonna be Mix, Mix Del Delgado or something. Okay. And he's a man with no arms. <laughs> and he's the protagonist. Okay. And his face looks vaguely feminine, and that's what I want. Nice. Um, so... I dig. Mix Del Delgado is, uh, kind of an airhead. Um, he, he, like, he's kind of like an airhead, but, um, he likes fighting, because it's gonna be like a fighting comic, right? Oh, okay. Um, uh, and most of the fights are going to have between, like, bodyguards and that kind of thing and <laughs> trying to stop assassins, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, and he, um, he's, like, uh, I guess he's nice, but he's kind of, like, self-absorbed a little bit. He's not, like, selfish, but he's just sort of an airhead and, um, uh, he doesn't have a job. So he's out of work, and uh, basically what he's doing is he goes to this, uh, his friend works at a place called um, Love, and they, they're they uh, they're big into, like, industry, and they uh, have airline, and airlines, and that kind of thing. So basically, he goes up to the headquarter building, right? And he walks in, because he's kind of an airhead, and he just, like, he's like, okay, I want a job as a bodyguard here to the secretary, and she's like, that's not how, like, we conduct interviews and that shit. So then, right as she's saying that, she gets a call from the penthouse, basically, of the building, and the CEO wants to send up people to escort uh, someone he fired down because they're, like, not, like... Cooperating. Yeah, cooperating. So uh, she tells him that she's dealing with someone right now who wants a job, and he actually says, all right, send him up. So Mix takes an elevator up, sees these two uh, children, like a boy and a girl, and uh, the elevator attendant. They go all the way to the top. He gets off the elevator... And there are three people in, like, the, the room. There's his friend that he knows has the job here. There's uh, the head bodyguard. And then there's um, uh, the CEO. Mm-hmm. Um, so he walks in, and the CEO's, like, uh, talking to his friend. And he's like, 
congratulations, you get a second chance um, to to get your job back, right? We were going to escort you out, but since there's someone new here who wants your job, what we're going to have you do is we're going to have an interview of sorts, and if uh, whoever passes the interview gets to uh, be the bodyguard in the company, right? So, um, uh, and then the... Uh, the head bodyguard, a female, just kind of doesn't talk. She's just there right now, right? Okay. Um, so uh, I made I made the um, I could draw him out because I didn't bring the notebook, but I made the uh, the CEO super like eccentric. He's like is a white suit, kind of gold trimming. Um, he wears two ties. What the? Because I thought that would be pretty fucking <laughs> like CEO like of just he's larger than life, right? Sure. Um, and. Uh, so then there's this, like, st- real straight-laced head bodyguard, uh, short hair. Um, she has, like, markings on her face, like uh, like little like pink things uh, right near the corners of the outside of her eyes. Mm. And then lower on her cheeks. And then she has eyebrows, but they're really small and just kind of there. Right? Yeah, like okay, I think I know. Yeah, that, that's sort of an aesthetic that I've seen, like, with Japanese characters that are, like, very serious and, like, uptight. And, mm-hmm. like, just a very short... So yeah, that's her, and um, then there's the Aaron guy, which is uh, uh, Mix's friend, uh-huh. and so Mix and his friend are actually going to have to fight for uh, the friend's job. So the friend um, basically is like, Mix, like, please turn back now, I need this job, you know, uh, basically um, Aaron isn't that good at fighting, but he got the job because he, he wanted to like protect people, you know, uh-huh. protect people he cares about, and he can't, and but he's bad at it. So he's losing the job, right? Um, and the CEO is very pragmatic about everything, right? Because mm-hmm. um, uh, later on in the story, he's like, going to have someone fired, and uh, Mix protects him from the person he fired because the person's coming back to get revenge, kind of. And Mix was like, you know, this person was distraught and really sad. And like, what did you do to him? And he's like, oh, I fired him because he was, um, he was like, creeping on ladies or something. Like, uh, he was, like, sexually something, not, like, assaulting, but, like, almost that ladies and mix is going to be like oh my god you had to get rid of them then right because that's bad and he's like yeah if uh the ladies were um if he was this person was around the ladies the ladies production would have gone down so i need to make sure that their production isn't like a problem so he's so like optimizing everything Mm -hmm. yeah and it's less so about the humanity of people but also but more about his company He he puts his company over people gotcha and um so, basically, that's why when he sees this guy with no arms, he's like, okay, if he's better, if he's a better bodyguard than you, mm. then I don't care that he has no arms. He's a better bodyguard. That's his, you know, that would be. So, what they do is um, the interview process is basically the head bodyguard who's, like, super straight laced. He's like, hey, head bodyguard, why don't you sit down in a chair and we'll play this game. And she's like, why do I have to do it? Um, so, she sits down in the chair and she has two stopwatches. Okay. What they have to do is they have to protect her from the other person. What happens is when the other person tag when uh, one person who is like the attacker, right, tags the head bodyguard, she times them. And then they act as the defender against the attacker, right? right, right? right. And every time they switch, and whoever has the greatest time at the end wins. You mean lowest time? Like, no. Of like longest the- time of being the guarder. Right? Uh, the person who guards. I see what you're saying. It's like, so at some point you're expecting them to, like, lose or something. Where... Right, right. At, at a set time, at, like, ten minutes, you go stop. Gotcha. You gotcha. look at both of the times. Whichever one has had a longer um, longer time having her tagged um, and being the defend and defending her, because it's, it's bodyguard, right? right, right You'd right. be protecting her. So they do that, um, and then... Um, uh, Mix finds a sneaky way to win, so he's on the team, basically. Um, mm-hmm. And then that stuff happens, and then basically as uh, it goes on, near the end of this uh, that arc, what's going to happen is there's going to be another CEO, and um, the whole kind of idea behind this story is um, like to emphasize your strengths and not try to fix your weaknesses, right? So Yeah, I was just about to ask that. like, cause That's the theme of the story. Gotcha. So. Uh, what happens is, and this is this is going to be another freaking exciting rant. So the power system, you know how uh, Dragon Ball has Ki, uh, Hunter x Hunter has Nen. Um, in like my Angel versus Demon one, it would be kind of that Angel Angel power, Demon power. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So in this one, it's called Stop and Go, or Ebb and Flow or something. Ebb and Flow sounds cooler, but it doesn't make any goddamn sense. <laughs> um, so Stop and Go. So there's two forces, right? And each person has, like, the two forces together in them. Together, they nullify each other out, and nothing really bad happens. But you can use Stop, like, you can emit it, right? Uh, and Stop, like can slow down objects, so, right, if, like, someone threw a baseball at you, you could use stop to th slow it so it didn't hit you as hard or something. Um, and it increases the weight of objects, and it's kind of like yang. It's, like, the darker element, right? And it's kind of less the thing. It's, like, yin-yang. Um, so, uh, and you can actually, like, create, you can solidify air out of it. So you can use, make things out of stop, right? Like, weapons. Mm -hmm. So that's, like, the power system. Everybody would have a certain, like, thing like that. Uh, and then there's Go, which you can enhance, like, your speed, um, you can, like, throw punches faster, and you can actually, to some extent, make your brain work a little bit faster. So mm. you can, like, um, you know, react to things quicker or something like that. Um, so that's going to be the kind of power system. So in the thing, when Mix first learns about it, um, the person suggests, okay, Mix, what we want you to do is... We want you to, uh, like, the head bodyguard uh, usually tells people how they should emphasize their stop and go. They're like, why don't we give you robotic arms? And the thing is, if you infuse them with go and, like, use go to make them move really fast, you won't have the limitations of human arms, right? Mm -hmm. So when a human can only punch so fast or the ligaments would be torn, if you had robotic arms that we gave you, you could use that and you could be so much more powerful with it. And he refuses because that's his, his weakness, right? Weakness is not having arms, and instead he'd like to focus on his strength because he's so flexible, you know, and dexter has a lot of dexterity because he uses his feet for everything because he doesn't have arms, right? right, right. Um, so instead he bases his fighting style on that. Uh, even in that interview, that uh, theme would be a little bit at play because uh, the Aaron guy, his friend, basically went to the bodyguard business because it was his weakness. He, he was always bad at fighting, right? Hmm. And... Um, he wanted to get better so he could protect people, but that's not what he's good at and not what his passion is. So mm. when Mix comes to take his job, Mix doesn't have a lot of sympathy for him because uh, cause he's like, not emphasizing his strengths. Yeah, because you're not doing what you love. You're not emphasizing your strengths. You're just trying to patch a hole, you know, and he's like, you know, if I take this job from you, it will be better. Like you'll, you'll be happier in the long run. Mm. So I'm not sad that I'm going to take this job from you. Plus, the guy was going to get fired if Mixed hadn't shown up at all, right? Um, so it kind of works out. But um, so what happens by the end is the CEO um, basically Mix embarrasses the CEO, and the CEO is uh, of this other company is going to be really weird, like clever of a villain because he's never going to like fight per se, but he's always going to have power, as in like corporate power. Mm. Like you know, he can control the police, and like he can get laws made like that. You know, and that's the kind of power he has. So, Mix embarrasses him, and he wants to get revenge, right? So eventually, he finds um he like uh um he because Mix is stronger than him, right? Because Mix has the power of stop and go, but uh, the CEO doesn't really like hasn't trained in that. The CEO gets one of his people to train him in stop and go for a long time, and then in the ending battle, uh, Mix is against him, right? And Mix um is there, and the guy just, like, shows Mix that he has stop and go and starts beating the crap out of Mix, right? Um, and, like, saying things like, what's wrong? Like, defend yourself, because he knows that Mix can, um, you know, defend using stop, you know, slowing his punches and that kind of thing. Um, uh, but then, so he beats Mix to a pulp, and, like, you know, he's on the ground bleeding, and he's, like, um, and then the CEO's like, I, you see, I've, like, done better than you. And then Mix, you know, looks up, and apparently they're videotaping that of the CEO of a popular company beating the oh. shit out of someone without arms. Ah. <laughs> and you see how it's that the guy's power was to be able to like do anything with corporations. Right. And like move, you know, people and, you know, hire people. He had so much money, but he focused on fighting instead. And when he focused on fighting, they used his strength the power to like get people to think things against him. So now there's the CEO beating up and he's like, why can't you defend yourself to a guy without arms? And then basically the company, he loses the company instantly. And that's kind of the end of that story, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So wow, it's that lays itself out pretty nicely, especially because you know the ending. That allows you to sort of like fit in the mm-hmm. rest of it, so that it would lead to that point. Yeah, that's really cool. So yeah, and then um, basically there's other story beats. Um, like I've I've got this whole like storyboard of like an arrow and all these different events happening on it that I'm trying to um experiment with right now. It's tough finding like stuff to fill in the dead space because I've got a lot of the story beats finished like the interview part and the ending but like a lot in the middle I have no idea like what because I wanted to make like important events along the way right uh, and I feel like uh, a problem with stories a lot is they uh, they don't have a lot of causality um, which is like uh, this character did this and because of that this event happened if this character hadn't done this the story would not have changed. But a lot of time, it's like this character does this, and then this character does this. So you want, and then this sort of, character does this. So you're trying to interweave and to yeah, intertwine to make it actually like the characters are changing the world and they're doing something, mm. and each event that happens is caused because of a previous of thing. a previous event in some way. Right. And yeah, like outside things can happen, but I want either if an outside thing happens, it changes the story or you know like it works together with it to like mm. change things so, yeah, yeah so it gives the world sort of a level of continuity and and progression it's like all these things are relevant to the story they, they aren't just boxed events that just happen in their right. own thing and then you move on because mm-hmm. like you see that you don't see that at all in hunter hunter like that is a world that very much so builds a world in which the previous events are consequential to the next mm-hmm. things. Yeah, like, exactly. With, um, like, it was so weird. Like, the problem with Hunter x Hunter is I, like, I have trouble knowing when certain arcs end and other arcs begin in that. <laughs> because the, uh, just from, uh, you've seen all of it, right? Yes. Okay, good. Um, because from the Hunter Island, or what it was? Greed it? Island. Greed Island, thank you. Greed Island to the Chimera Antark. They just, like, they were, like, you know, it felt like the end of the Greed Island arc, and then they teleport, and then they see this new guy, and I'm like, okay, so if it's his father, it feels like, you know, it will have, you know, come to an end. But if it's not, then, like, I don't know what, what like... Where are we it now? just immediately, like, just, like, oh, you're uh, Chimera Ants now. What? When? <laughs> When the opening theme song changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the indicator. <laughs> that nice ED. Oh, that nice ending song. There's some pretty nice bangers in Hunter. I, I'm i blown away, man. I wish they would change the OP just because I know they have the power. <laughs> the ED sound fantastic, but whatever. I guess Departure's fine. We'll just listen to it a fourth time. <laughs> the- All the visuals are different now. Well, yeah. don't, don't you dare change the song. <laughs> And I love listening to Departure again. <laughs> it's a good time. It's a good time. It's not a bad song, but good lord. But yeah, so that's that's all the creative projects I think I've got going on. I'm trying to think. I don't think I have anything else. I got gotcha. you. Thank God. Because <laughs> that'd be a bit too overwhelming. I, I think it already is a bit too, like, yeah, you're, like you're, you're messing- sacrificing the, the like, integrity of or you're sacrificing the completion of all these projects yeah, because well, having so many things yeah there's no way you're going to complete them all and it's like ah darn yeah and just getting one of them finished just feels so good so you're able to finish one thing mm. but working on multiple things at the same time is like the it's like the slow snail progress oh yeah and it's even like and let's be honest slow snail progress is already how most of it goes <laughs> so like having all of this Makes it like, oh, uh-huh. <laughs> super duper slow, like you're uh-huh. mentioning. So well, there you go. You wanna call it a uh, wrap here, man? I uh, I have nothing else. So that's a pretty good yeah. closing point. Great stuff, people. It's fun. Yeah, and it's you. actually like the most rewarding thing I think. Having a completed project. Finishing projects is like really satisfying. Yeah. And then you move on to the next thing, and it's like work hard and then you finish it and you're just like ah that feels good yeah. all right thanks for 
for all two people listening. Thanks. Yep. For- <laughs> Jerry and Jermaine. Yeah. Uh, all right. This has been Ganch Brothers podcast. I don't know. What are we calling this? The longest podcast ever. <laughs>